You're now listening to the O oh Sith Podcast. Video games, comics, movies, life, and whatever the f*** else we want to talk about. With Nick DDW, Cecily, Yvonne, the first polyamorous podcast couple. O oh Sith. O oh Sith. Ah, Sith! O oh Sith. O oh Sith. O oh Sith. O oh Sith. Oh so freaks and geeks, get ready for the O oh Sith Show. Hey guys, Osif Show. Osif Show. Woo-hoo. Uh, big episode today. Very, very big episode today. Last episode before Cecily pops like a balloon. Pops like a balloon? Popping like a balloon. It's more like they're gonna, well, mm, I guess so. Yeah, you're gonna pop like a balloon. <sighs> they're inducing me today because my son does not want to come out of my vagina. He is comfortable in the vajayj. The and the JJ. The JJ is wet and slippery and soft Whoa. and warm okay. and... He doesn't know all of those things. He's in my uterus. And that is the reason why he does not want to leave the JJ. So this is the last episode before it gets like <laughs> really loud in this house. And in the background of every episode, you're going to hear wah... Wow. No, you're not. Wow. You'll go so crazy if that happens. Enjoy. I, I will go crazy, but I'm saying for the listeners, you know, that this is the last peaceful episode they're going to have. So, namaste. And, namaste. And, you know, enjoy it. So, we're, today, we're going to discuss a lot of things. We're going to talk about uh, movies that you guys have probably already seen a million and one times that we finally got around to seeing for the first time, like Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, we definitely got to talk uh, about that. We will so we talk about um the killing joke. We we saw the killing joke that just came out. That was actually, you know, well, we'll get into that. Um what else did we see? We saw a couple of movies. We saw the boss. Yeah, we saw the boss. The boss was actually decent. You know, uh but we're we're Melissa McCarthy's not my favorite, but we're gonna get into that. So on top of that today we got some awesome video game news. We're gonna talk about the release of Marvel Ultimate Alliance, uh the complete collection that came out. Also, Batman came out. Um, Batman? Yeah. See, this is how out of the loop Cecily is. We're going to talk about some of the comics that came out. I mean, it's going to be a really good episode. We're trying to take it back to the roots, as always. So, we're, we're, it's going to be a really, really, really fun episode. And we also have a, a Fuck This Shit of the Week today. And a Everything With Eve segment. So, we're giving you guys everything you love and more right before Cecily pops. Like a mm. fucking piece of kernel in a microwave. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm gonna have multiple things coming out of my vagina. That's it what you're probably saying. will. You're you're gonna have placenta juice shooting at me and shit turds on the bed and oh, then a baby head is gonna come out and right. He's gonna you know he's gonna cry before he even like actually oh, is Jesus. fully out of your vagina because like as soon as he comes out he starts crying. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, because then you know they gotta clear his earways and shit, so they gotta make sure he cries. But if he's already in like. You know, I don't want to come out mode, and he's sleeping, and then he induce you, and then he comes, starts to come out. When they pull him out by the, because you know he comes out the head first. So the first thing that's gonna come out is gonna no, be like he's gonna come out feet first. But that's what I'm saying. Well, some babies do actually, and it gets like, yeah, seriously. And, no, I know that. And some that's, babies get like that's arms. Called, some, that's called a breach. They don't. They, they, it's like they try Pacific to fix Rim. That. They they try to fix the breach. I know. See. Oh my god. So it's but you know head first into the breach. You know, I was talking to your mother this morning, and she said oh, that you're god. stupid for thinking that. It's going to take less than, like, 12 hours for me to give birth. Because some people give birth in, like, four or five hours. Not for their first child. Yes, but this is... We're not getting back into that. The, again, this this is not new to you. Yes, it is. This is the first... I'm going to have a child come out of my vagina. My first full-term pregnancy. So, yes, There it is. you go. Full-term pregnancy. So, right. you, you have Which experience Which means this is the pregnancies. first time I'm, I've given birth. But there's some people that have reported, and we can Google this shit, that their first pregnancies right. went for about four, five, six hours. No. Yes. This is not a, a universal no. fact. You know, that that's not what it is. It's just a general consensus. It's not a universal fact. It's not fucking general consensus about that yeah that's what you're telling me you're saying that the general consensus says that every first term fucking birth is 12 hours or more right right see exactly so what are you talking about that's I, the know, general I, thought consensus. You, I know i thought you were talking so about i'm like telling the you the general consensus the general consensus is saying that but that doesn't mean necessarily that's true so so how, how long you think i'm gonna be I'm i am gonna be in labor i am it's not about thinking i am pushing for 
a six hour at least maximum. <clears throat> and if it takes longer than six hours, I am protesting the entire way through. I should get something. Into your vagina. I should get something. You are. You're getting a baby. I mean something other than my child, Nick. I'm going to open up your vagina and scream in there, come the fuck out before I pull you out myself. Yeah, okay. I will be the paternal figure before he's even out of the womb. You've been doing that this whole fucking time. And he's going to know my voice and he's going to climb to my voice. He does know your voice already. And he's going to climb to my voice. He's going to climb. So, yeah, like, so now he's going to climb out of my vagina. Yes. Not pop out, climb he's out He's going to pop vagina. out and climb. He's going to, it's like a slip and slide. He's going to... Oh first, he's going to get on his hands and knees, which he's already on. And then he's going to start climbing and then slide and pop right he out of that shit. He is not on his hands and knees. You know that, right? Basically, he is. He's laying down. Do you know what the baby looks like in here? Yes. Do you need to see yes. pictures? It looks like the Antichrist cross. It's upside down. Oh, my God. <laughs> So it looks like. Why do you stress me out <laughs> so on the day that I'm supposed to be induced? I don't understand. It, it, that's basically what it is. This. It, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a very interesting day today, folks. So while this you is, guys are listening to this, this is the last this, time you're gonna have like us like be not parents. <laughs> <laughs> She's finally getting it through her head right now. No, I feel like you're gonna freak out. I am gonna freak out. You know, Ivy thinks you're gonna cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> and I, Ivy needs to give us some informative poison now that I thought about that. I should have fucking messaged her before we started this shit and said, give me some fucking informative poison. Yeah, she thinks that you're going to cry. That's I think her, during the commercial her, break, I'm going to tell her to give me some inf- some fucking informative poison that's for the next episode. That's her informative poison that you're so, going to cry. Ivy's informative poison is not that I'm going to cry. Yes, it is. That's all she kept saying yesterday is... It's going to be such an emotional thing. You're going to cry. Nick's going to cry. I think Eve is going to cry. I was like, I don't really know about Eve crying. I'm not too sure about Nick. Are you going to cry? I think I might. I don't think you're going to cry. I think, I I think, think I'm going to be crying about say, this I think whole gonna, process. I think, I think you're going to cry for the relief of not having a baby in you anymore. But I don't think you're going to cry because it's, it's your baby. I don't think that's going to be the case. You're going to be happy because it's your baby. I don't think you're going to be like, oh my God, my son. I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to cry because like, oh my God, it's probably out with me. I think that's what's going to happen. I really want him out of me. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think you're going to cry because it's your son. I don't think you, like you have an emotional attachment, but I don't think you built that emotional attachment from the beginning. What? Like you started building that emotional attachment to your son, I think like, I'll say month number six. What? Yeah, I'm talking about the emotional attachment. You know, I swear to God. You know, like some some what? mothers, some what mothers make, are like. What, what makes you think that? Just by like the things that you've done and exhibited. It's like, 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 like talking about him and like going to baby shopping and getting emotional as you're baby shopping and you know all that stuff. Like you started to build all of that like maternal. Oh my God, I'm really having a baby. Like this is awesome. Like towards the end of your pregnancy, in the beginning, you were just like, yeah, I'm pregnant, and that was it. It was just like. Then at the end, I'm just like, yo, she's she's really starting to get into it now. Like, that's when you started to, like, I guess it started to really hit you that you was pregnant? No. Yeah, I think so. It's always hit me that I've been pregnant. Well, yeah, because, of course, your stomach is getting bigger. But I'm talking about, like, no. internal-wise. No, that's bullshit. Because I knew from the beginning, even before we took the test that I was pregnant, that whole month I knew that I was pregnant. And I kept telling Eve. But I didn't tell you nothing because I wasn't, like... That's fucked up. A hundred percent positive. That's fucked up. But I kept telling Eva, I was like, I'm gonna miss my period. I feel like I'm pregnant. We're gonna have a talk about this during <laughs> commercial break about why Eva's keep secrets of pregnancies and shit from me. But you know, it, 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 I, I think, I think you're not gonna cry for that. I think you're gonna cry. I don't think you're gonna cry for that reason. I think you're gonna cry for relief. You don't think I'm I gonna think... see him and instantly like fall in love all over again? I'm like... not all over again. What are you trying to say? You was in love with him already? Of course I love Why are you falling in love with another man? Oh, Lord Jesus. The I fuck is this? Talk about already. If you fall out of love with him, better make sure you fall out of love with him and don't fall in love with another nigga again. Yeah. That's right. Only oh. me. Oh. Okay. Fall in love with my son. Yeah. That's some creepy shit. Yeah. That, that belongs in, in the Midwest and the Baby. South. With <laughs> 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 fucking hillbillies and shit. Yeah. If you're a hillbilly and watching this, if you married your cousin or uncle or on mother or father shame on you keep listening to us but shame on you oh <laughs> oh okay so you're getting game of thrones i'm getting shame. game of thrones sh- shame <laughs> with my belt. you have no fucking you. belt i got a belt right here look yeah, I swear to god. shame i swear to god shame you're gonna hurt your finger shame, <laughs> shame. 
You're such a fucking dickhead. So when we come back, we're coming back to Cecily's Fuck This Shit of the Week. Baby, you ready for it? No. Okay, fuck this shit of the week. We're coming right back. And now, the Fuck This Shit of the Week. Okay, so we're back with the Fuck This Shit of the Week. Cecily, we haven't had one in like five episodes. I think more than that. Probably more than that, yep. Because Cecily hasn't been enraged since she hasn't been working. So no, there's I've been, been enraged. There's been no, no rage in Cecily. Cecily has not turned into the Hulk in like... Really? Like two months. So this has been pretty peaceful. So as soon as she popped this baby out today, it's going to get... It's going to get pretty violent in this house again. Do so. you really? Do you really feel like I haven't been angry not as much i lost my job not yet not as much i mean i think you've been um more more docile more calm you know like like Hmm. without pills Hmm. i mean like you don't have pills to calm you've just been more calm i don't think there's been much that i didn't have pills before so what are you talking about i'm just giving you an example like more like it didn't take pills or anything to calm you down you just lost your job less things to rage about less stress less anger you come home less moody you know i mean been better you know what i think i'll just take that as a compliment it is a compliment i'm just saying it's very much a compliment like you, there's no LaShawn or anybody to piss you off at work and you come home already in a bad mood like you know mm-hmm. if you get a bad mood it's because of with, you or because of me or because of your mom <laughs> or me, but i'm just saying it's like less often is what i'm saying so mm. You know, they didn't take pills or anything to calm you down. You just calm down naturally, so that's good. Mm. So, fuck the shit of the week with Cecily. Let's hear what she's finally raging about. Go ahead, baby. You. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you. I, I love you, though. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're very um, you're very annoying, I have, to, I have to say. Oh, I'm completely annoying? No, I said very. I didn't say completely. This is one of the annoying things. <laughs> So, everybody, I'm annoying. I'm completely 100% annoying. No. I'm an see, annoying human being. See, this is what the fuck I'm talking about because I said very and you said completely and now you're switching around what the fuck I said. So, I'm an annoying person. Yes, you can be. We should uh-huh. We should also ask Eve. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, I'm an annoying person. I never said that. 5 out of 7 days out of the week, I'm an annoying person. I think that's fair. <laughs> Pretty hurtful, people, but it, it's... How was that hurtful? You call you me can, annoying? You can call me... Do you know half the shit that you said about my vagina last night, and then you want to talk yeah, about... Yeah, but you talk about, like, uh, 24 hours in a day. I'm annoying the entire 24 hours of the day. No. You said five days out the week. <laughs> there, there are definitely around five days out the week where you annoy me. Well, annoy you, but you're calling me an annoying person, is my point. Yo, I swear to God. You're aggravating Like, the whole person, all throughout the day, is annoying. Like, that nigga in, in school where you just, like, get him the fuck away from me. He's, he's annoying. Like, I don't even want to talk to him. No. See, there are levels to this shit. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh-huh. No. All right. So, what, what, what do I do to annoy you? <laughs> you want me to list it? Well, fuck this shit a week. So, go ahead. Let's... let's, let's milk it here what, what, what do i do that annoys you no because i don't i don't want to argue with you right before i this go to the hospital argument. it's fine i'm just gonna be the one that's gonna be taking care of you the whole time signing documents it's not gonna worry no that doesn't sound see annoying that doesn't sound I'm just the one signing the documents and shit you know so if i actually slip and name a child like torona or some shit like you know just, oh. <laughs> Don't you fucking dare. You know, like like Tyrone was usually like that. You know, then you'll be a little upset. You know, but that, that was just because. So what, we're going to have a tie tie? That's what we're going to have? A tie, what the fuck is a tie tie? I'm not calling my fucking child Tyrone. <laughs> Why would you name him tie tie? That means his middle name has to be Tyrone. Tyrone Tyrinius. <laughs> Annoying. This right here. Annoying. <laughs> When you fucking get together with your little fucking friends <laughs> in the fucking chat and say stupid shit. <laughs> Annoying. Oh, like... Last, like, last night... With when me you, and the Sith Lords, the old Sith Sith Lords. Right, last night when you talked the shit about my vagina. <laughs> Annoying. Okay. What did I say about your vagina? You gotta give context. Nope. You gotta give context. Fuck you. You have to give nope. context. Nope. So you fuck this shit of the week. You the people fucking, deserve to you know. You fucking say that shit out of your mouth. Basically, I'm not what I said that shit. was... <laughs> Vagina. <laughs> it's expandable because she's had a, a few 
uh, uh, how can I say, a few too many uh, sexual partners in her past life. Uh, <laughs> past life, not current one. My past life. Well, it's not because it's not you now. So the past version of Cecily had a lot of uh, visitors there. I, I like. I like Dick. There, right. you, there you go. She had a lot of visitors. I'm trying to put it in, in a nice way. And I said that they already drilled a hole, you know, down the pathway. So it should be easier for our child <laughs> to get out. But when Nick does not... And understand. I said that it was yeah, also extremely lubricated because she had female partners as well. So it's probably already lubed up enough. Mm. So and I said it should be expandable enough because she also had, you know, one, one or two children in her lifetime that never came to full, like she said, full term. So, you know, like, so it's already expandable because of that. It already has a hole drilled in, and it's already slippery. So I said it should be an easy, like uh, easy pregnancy. It should just, the hole's built. It should just follow the hole to the light and then slide right through, and pussy just expands. You're such a it's stupid easy. motherfucker. You understand that, right? It's easy. So I, I was just saying that's the whole point. Do you that understand that being my pregnant before means that you're, that it's your uterus? That is used to it, not your vagina. Yeah, you because, uterus. Yeah, you said my, you said you you uterus. Nick. What? Nick. This is your fucking shit of the week. So. Nick. What? I am gonna fuck you up. <laughs> fuck you up so bad. This is your you you uterus we're talking about. So. Yeah. <laughs> How? Judge. <laughs> I've had to go for the, the judge. The fuck you mean, judge? <laughs> Ain't nobody fucking here to save I'm, you. Judge, you hear the threats, right? She's threatening my life. I haven't had to get evidence on the podcast in a while, baby. Come on. Ow. So, we're, we're talking about slip and slide vaginas if you're just tuning in. Ow. Ow. If you have one, the number's in the description of the podcast. We would love to hear from our female listeners about how how long has it been for your pregnancy? How, what's your longest pregnancy? If you ever had been pregnant or gave birth or whatever, what was your longest term? And if so, if it came to full term, how long were you in the hospital? That's what we want to know. The, the number is in the description below of this podcast. If you're listening to it on, on, on Stitcher Radio or iTunes Podcast or whatever. If it's SoundCloud, I don't know if it translated. We just started experimenting with SoundCloud and YouTube, so I don't know if it carries over. But if so, we, we would like to know. Just let us know. Send us a text or email. I'm going to fuck you up once this is done. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to, from here, jump into our commercials and our beautiful, beautiful sponsors and promoters for this podcast while I protect my balls and our future children. No, no, no. <laughs> there have been so many motherfuckers up there. You, what makes you think you're going to be back? What are, you no. talking, what are you talking about up there? You think that me and you are going to have sex anytime soon? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, we debate this out. You're fucking Enjoy serious. the commercials. Are you serious? <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Hey, guys. So, just want to say thank you to Gunhead. Gunhead Designs. Yeah. yeah. You know, Comic-Con is coming up, and I really, personally, I kind of want a costume done. But I suck at sewing, and I suck at drawing, and... What else do you suck at, babe? I don't suck dick. But, I mean, I would have had to, like, sneak into a building. Wow. Like, if I had to sneak into a building, wow. and it had to be somebody to suck a dick, I probably would be the one to do it. I don't want to go there. I would volunteer for that. I'm not touching that. While, while you and the boss sneak in. I'm not touching that. But anyway, Gunhead Designs is an amazing company and basically what they do is if you have an idea a concept and you have it either drawn or you have the toy version of it anything that they can basically look at and then translate to a computer they can do that they can make your design put onto a digital uh canvas board and then you can take it to a costume maker or a seamstress or whatever the case is and they would actually make it for you so it's the first step in making your ultimate dream costume right Yes, baby. So, me personally, I have a secret project coming up, and that project is going to be a mashup between two superheroes that I cannot name because I do not want any of you motherfuckers stealing it. So, <laughs> you know, it's going to be an amazing, amazing product, and uh, product, I say, because, you know, also people are going to copy me, of course, you know. But oh. they do that a lot. Like, they, they copy that Captain America, Spider-Man mashup, which also Gunhead helped do. So, I mean... It's going to be an amazing thing, and of course, I'm not going to use anybody else but Gunhead Designs. And you can find them at GunheadDesign.com. 
And once you go there, you just uh, basically hit the contact button. You let them know that we sent you from the old Sif show. And let them know that, you know, you love what they do. And, and give them a shout out if you want on their Facebook, their Instagram, all that stuff. Is gunheaddesign.com, baby. Spell it for them. No. Baby, spell it for them. <laughs> G-U-N-D-E. <laughs> S-I. You spelled it wrong. G-U-N-H-E-A-D-D-E-S-I-G-N.com. That's gunheaddesign.com. But where's the S? The S is secret. That's where it's for. Really? Because Gunhead Designs. But the address is Gunhead, Gunhead Design. Design. Yeah. I know. But definitely check them out on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. All that good stuff. They're an amazing group of, of talented gals and guys. And they're just awesome. Awesome people. And they do amazing work. And we're so proud that they're part of our promoters and sponsors. And definitely, like I said, give them a heads up from us. Make sure you show, some, show them some love. Share their stuff that they do. And they have some amazing designs that people that came up with stuff that you would never even think of that they gave them permission to use and they're even there too so it's not just your traditional stuff and they're on top of the ball even they even had that new amazing spider-man from the ps4 game mm -hmm. they had the design for that there too so give them a shout out i think i'm gonna show them some love hit them up for a, a like female predator type of oh that'd be awesome yeah yeah like it's, it's a skin tight webbing one because you know how they usually have the webbing mm -hmm. and they gotta get the armor it's gonna be a big see, project. But, see, but I don't. I don't really want like the armor. I want. I want it like. I have my own idea for. It. I'm not gonna say no more. <laughs> <laughs> so check them out, guys. Go ahead, design dot com, uh, and the link will also be in the description of this podcast to make things easier. Also, uh, big shout outs to lootcrate dot com. <laughs> If you guys love Loot Crate, you know Loot Crate is a monthly subscription, and basically what they do every month they send you a box, and every month there's a theme of the box. I think this month's theme is anti heroes, so you can definitely get like uh, Punisher, Batman, Spawn, things like that. You don't know what's inside the box; it's a mystery box. It's like Scooby Doo is mystery. It has a question mark. Yes, baby. Yeah, it's like the Joker, except they don't spit acid in your face. Oh. But it's awesome. So if you go to lootcrate.com uh, and you put in the code OSIF. That's capital O H capital S I T H. You get a promotional discount and off, so you get to save some money on it. So definitely check out LootCrate.com. Use the code OSIF. It gets your money off the product, so it'll be amazing for you guys. It'll be amazing, boss. Yeah, definitely let us know how you enjoyed it, and you can share some pictures with us as well. We can put it on a blog about some of our customers that are actually using Loot Crate now. Woo we would love that. So definitely, guys, check that out. And from here, we're going to jump into one of our sponsored OSIF Showgirls models. So enjoy that. And when we get back, we're going to be going into comics, getting geeked up on those comics. Geeked up? Babe. You completely thought I forgot about geeked up, and I did. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carnation Cosplay, and you can find me on Instagram as Carnation underscore cosplay. I'm also an OSIF Showgirl, and you can find me on their various social medias. OSIF, oh, it's time for comics. So, comics. This week was a dry week in comics, I guess, if you want to call it dry. I mean, it wasn't really something that I was big, big into. Um, they had a lot of good comics out. They expanded on a lot of their good stories that, you know, they had out. Of course, right before San Diego Comic-Con, there was a shitload of comics right. out. That took like 80 bucks for me. Like, that's how many comics was out. It took like 60. No, it was like at the tax. It was like 80. It was mm. fucked up. And, you know, this week, of course, DC goes back to being like five. And Marvel goes back to being like five. I also know. want to talk about um, the whole theory with the three Jokers. Oh, you can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, So, it was just... I wasn't really feeling it. I mean, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> it's you hard. sound it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to describe, but I, I wasn't really feeling it. I mean, okay, so basically in, in this this week's Superman, it was again with the whole Eradicator from Superman's timeline coming back, and um, you know the pre fifty two Superman, mm -hmm. and it was just him fighting them again and finding out that all the souls of Krypton is in the Eradicator. It wasn't. Right. It wasn't just the Phantom Zone. Like he took everybody's soul, and. Um, uh, his son, John, uh, finally decided to take a cape, Crypto's cape, I guess, mm -hmm. and, like, use his heat vision and put it on his, his little zip-up costume thing that he got from a thrift shop. 
<laughs> and it was him and his son basically fighting against the Eradicator, and that's basically all it was. And the Souls of Krypton was basically helping him out. That's that's where that one wound up at, and it didn't even finish. So the story arc is still going. So it was just that's it was filler, was? yeah. And then um, Batman, he found out that you know he uh, got them, and got them girl, of course, was being brainwashed. So. You know, he was trying to reach out to... Well, Very Gotham much. Girl... Yeah. Remember I told you they flew into the building and um, Psycho Pirate was there with the other guy and they brainwashed him? No. Yeah, so they were brainwashed and... You just don't remember. It's on a podcast, baby. And um, they, they were brainwashed and Gotham Girl, um, she's in the back cave and all that she can repeat is, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared the whole time. Because remember, she was copying Gotham. Um, well, I, the last I remember from what she told me, I said that some shit was going to happen to her because that's what was going to make her brother turn against Batman. Right, because they were in a burning building because Batman earned their trust, remember? Yes. That's what I'm saying. In that burning building, there was two figures there, remember? And they were in the middle of that. And that's what was Psycho Pirate who put the fucking, you know, building on fire and the other guy. So... The whole point is, it went into this, this shit where Gotham is trying to fix things. Well, you know, the guy Gotham is, is trying to fix things. And he's saying, I can fix this, I can fix this, I can fix this. Batman basically catches up to him, says, you can't. You know, you're being controlled. You have to fight it, blah, blah, Doesn't really work out. You know, they don't have a confrontation, but he keeps running from Batman. Because I guess mm-hmm. Batman is his idol. He's still trying to fight it. But then, in the end, he winds up, I think, killing somebody. What? Yeah, and... Um, then no, he goes. Then he tells Batman, "I can't fix it anymore." So it goes from oh, him God. fighting it to, you know, he basically him gives in. in. And the only way that he feels that he can save Gotham is by burning it down to the ground. What? Yeah, like to start fresh, start a new. Type oh of thing. God! And that's where that goes. So Gotham Girl, it looks like Gotham Girl. They're gonna basically try to unbrainwash her. Okay. You know, and it's gonna be and- Gotham Girl versus Gotham. Oh God! So I'm guessing he's gonna die. Batman's gonna take her on as like part of the Bat family. Have his own personal mini Superman at his disposal. Mm. You know, because Batman loves collecting weapons and children. You know. <laughs> that does not sell good. That's babe. basically what Batman does. He collects children. So, as like his little mini army. And uh, Gotham even killed his own parents. What? Yeah, so it's fucked up. What so, even the if the Batman fuck? saved his parents, you know, he winds up killing his own parents anyway. So, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, Batman Beyond came out, which I was really happy about. And... You know, this continues the whole Brother Eye storyline where, you know, like Forever Evil, where, you know, uh, Tim Dr- where Tim Drake uh, from that timeline and um, Terry McGinnis disappeared. And then okay. Tim Drake became the new Batman Beyond. Right. And um, in, a f- in the future. And um, you find out that Rewire, who he's fighting the whole time, wasn't actually the Rewire from the cartoon or the comic. It was actually Terry McGinnis. What? Somehow, yeah, somehow Terry McGinnis... When the timeline got reset again, mm-hmm. uh, Terry McGinnis actually wound up back in future Gotham. And um, basically, uh, I forgot the name of the guy, but he's a, a Batman Beyond villain. And uh, he basically made Terry McGinnis believe he was Rewire. Gave him the so, Rewire so then, suit. So, so then he actually became Rewire? Basically, thinking he was one of his old arch enemies. That's... And he thinks that the only way... That he can basically cure himself. Because Rewire has to keep getting batteries to recharge himself to keep himself from dying. So he thinks that... Yeah, but he's not really Rewire, so... But but that's the point. But that's what he thinks in his head. Because that's what Rewire always needed. So he thinks that in order for him to do that and be completely cured, he needs the bat suit. So basically, the guy is trying to get Terry McGinnis to get back into the bat suit and become his personal Batman, basically. You know, and Matt is now running Bruce Wayne's part. Remember how Bruce Wayne was always old in yes, the Batcave? Yes. So now Matt, Terry McGinnis's brother, is in a Batcave helping out oh, Tim Drake. Oh my god. So like it's awesome because it's like it's a family. You can see where they're setting it up. Right. Because this is the next issue is gonna be the last issue of the Tim Drake arc. Because you know, I guess they're getting into the whole rebirth. That's where the whole rebirth thing is gonna kick off. Yeah. And Tim Drake is finally gonna put things right, probably get sent backwards in time, you know what I mean? Like disappear from existence, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. And merge back in with the timeline. And Terry McGinnis is going to pick up. You know what I mean? And like come back as Batman. Right. And it's going to be Matt in the Batcave and Terry I just, outside. I just really want Rebirth to continue. Because I'm really enjoying that. Yeah. Re- I don't know what happened with that 
but they haven't put out any. They've been putting out these Rebirth mini issues, but they haven't been putting out anything really concrete for Rebirth. Right. Uh, Green Lanterns number four saw uh, Simon Bass and Jessica Cruz and their internal workings because Jessica Cruz was trying to kill Simon Bass, her partner, because she was under the influence of the Rage Seed. And what the what, fuck is the Rage Seed? It's a Red Lantern thing where they could rebuild their home world on another planet. Okay. And um, it, inf- it infects the entire population with rage. Oh. So she was being infected with rage and self-doubt and all this shit. And, uh, Things she was, that make she, you angry. Right. And she was fighting Simon Bass. So he finally snapped her out of it. But in the end, she's like, I don't want to be a Green Lantern anymore. Yeah, it's like crazy. So she goes, I'm going to help you repower your rings. And that's going to be it for us after after we fix this. Okay. So I'm curious to see where they go with that. Because, you know, she went through a hell of a lot to be a Green Lantern. So I don't think she's just going to give it up. And I don't think Simon Bass is going to let her give it up. Either. Right. Because now he's finally starting to respect her. Oh, know, as, okay. as a partner as a partner because he just he was always so used to being alone you know what i mean and mm-hmm. you know he he she can't create a construct you know like you know like make things with her ring she can't do that okay because it takes a lot of willpower but she has like ocd uh anxiety she has all these fucking issues but she didn't even leave her apartment for like three years the fuck? yeah because she had like a lot of traumatic things happen to her so she couldn't even leave her apartment for three years so like she has all these mental issues that holds back her will right so she doesn't have enough will to create the construct but green lantern rings don't lie you know if you have willpower in you you know they sense you have the ability to overcome great fear and you have a lot of willpower and that's what keeps the ring with you right you understand what you're gonna say instead so, of it being like no you're a weak piece of shit i'm gonna go find somebody else right exactly so there's something in her and he's trying to explain it to her but she just She's not getting a message. She can't get past that mental block she has, basically, is what you're trying basically, to tell me? Basically. Okay. And all of her disabilities or illnesses or whatever you want to call them is basically holding her back even more. Okay. So he's getting frustrated. He's like, I don't want you as my partner. Like, I don't know why, how Jordan... Because remember, the whole Green Lantern Corps at this point disappeared. They're no longer in the universe. How Jordan is now the only Green Lantern and he's searching for the rest of the Corps. You know, and before Hal Jordan leaves, he's like, you two are now in charge of protecting planet Earth. You know, like, you guys. Peace out. Yeah. Because he thinks <laughs> he thinks alone they're shitty Green Lanterns, but together they make an amazing Green Lantern. Right. So instead of just working by themselves, because Earth always had like five Green Lanterns, but they were always working by themselves. Mm-hmm. Remember they had the Black One, John, John Stewart. They had Gal Gar- uh, Guy Gardner, and in another universe it was Gal Gardner, but Guy Gardner. Um, they had uh, Cal Rayner, Hal Jordan, the first one, the main one. Um, so they had like tons of Green Lanterns, right. you know, uh, but. You know, they were all separate. You know what I mean? Like, Jon Stewart might patrol space. Hal Jordan keeps Earth. Guy Garner might be on, with the Red Lanterns trying to they, keep them in check. They just had different, like, factions? Right. Almost. Well, they, they, they agreed to work together when they needed to, but they just stay out of each other's way. Right. Because for some reason, a ring kept choosing somebody from Earth. And they couldn't figure out, like, why. But if you look at it, you know why. Because, like, you got the Justice League on Earth. You got all these fucking supervillains. Like, yeah. if anybody needs the help, it's this fucking planet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so it's just that type of shit. You know, we're the most, like, unadvanced planet there is, you know? Oh, great. Because think about it. You don't see humans flying into space and shit. Except for Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's Marvel, not even DC. You get what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. that's the whole point. So, I guess Earth needed the help more than anybody else. That's why we have so many fucking Green Lanterns. So, Hal Jordan, since he's the newest, like, leader, like, complete leader, like, there's no Guardians anymore either, of the Green Lantern Corps, you know, he's like, okay, you guys together make an awesome Green Lantern, so you guys gotta work together. You partners. You know? So they share a power battery. Like, you know how each Green Lantern has a little power battery? Yes. To charge the ring? They share it. Just to make sure that they work together. Mm. They have one, and they can only summon it together. Right. So they're stuck together, basically. Right. Yeah. Um... This was also Harley Quinn. She finally got her first issue, solo issue by herself for Rebirth. Hmm. Um, which is very interesting because it combines all the other Harley Quinn comics that she's been in in one. Okay. And it shows her lesbian relationship with Ivy. She's asking Ivy to move in with her. Really? Yeah, and all this shit. And, uh, Does she, Ivy say no? Yeah, Ivy's basically like... <laughs> I Ivy's like, I love it, you know, because they're getting manicures and they have a spa day together. Like, it shows, like, her Them friendship being, like, and like, really girly? Yeah. Right. Like, and you can tell Harley Quinn wants to knock it up a notch, you know. And Ivy's like, oh, no, like I'm, I'm right. Fine with but you could tell Ivy are. would do it, though. You can, you can just say you could tell Ivy would do it. What do you think? Would what do you think is holding it? her back? 
I don't know, because I've never really seen Ivy as the lesbian type, but they've always been, like, semi-best friends. You know what I mean? Like They've always had that extra close type of... Yeah, like, they, they got that, that little... Gayness in them. That sexual tension, you know? Like, mm. more than Catwoman. You know, Catwoman's always, like, a bad girl. You know what I mean? Like, she, she wants... Everybody knows she wants to fuck Batman. Right. So, you know, she brings in all of her little minions and all her, her Harley squad, who is, like, these girls. Like, they're doing what Deadpool's doing in Marvel. We has his own little Deadpool core. Yeah. Not with other Deadpools from other universes, but like, because that's the Deadpool core. But like, um, Deadpool mercenaries that work using his mask and trademark and all this shit. So she has like different Harleys. Like this is Harley Fiona. This is Harley Quinna. This is you know like she has her own little Harley squad. Okay. So like they mix all the comics in one, mm-hmm. and like she's doing an introduction because she wants to run her own circus. Really. Yeah. And, um, so she basically is giving the guy that she's hiring, you know, her boyfriend, a lesson on how she wants the introduction to be. And, um, at the end of it, she's fighting zombies. Zombies? Of course. It's a Harley Quinn comic, so (sighs) she chops off her boyfriend's arm. Oh. Because she's seen it in The Walking Dead, basically. Oh, okay. Because he gets bit. So she goes, I'll save you, and then she, like, chops off his fucking arm with a sword. Oh, Jesus H. Christ. (laughs) She goes, I did it. He goes, you my arm. You fucking cut off my arm. She goes, you said it was going to fucking infect you. He goes, I said there was a chance. A chance of infecting <laughs> me. She goes, well, I've seen it on TV somewhere. You know, Walking Dead. Yeah. Remember when Rick started chopping off people's limbs? You know, she goes, before it spreads to your well, brain and stuff. did it to Harold, right? Harold and um, also the, what's that dude's name? The black guy that was dating Sasha. Mm, Remember yeah. they chopped off because they, they ate his legs so and yeah, chopped yeah, off the yeah. other part. Yeah, so like all this other shit. Yeah, so, but he ended up dying anyway. Exactly. That's so it works sometimes. It doesn't always work. You know what I mean? Like depends on how far along it is in blushing. So, um, they put him on a fucking uh, catapult at the top of the roof, and she puts a parachute on, and she gives him a cooler with his arm in it, and launches him off. It says at the last moment, pull the parachute, and like when they launched him in the air, he's basically saying like how he is regretting dating her type of shit. Oh, <laughs> like, what the fuck? So, um, yeah, it's funny. And then you got uh, Just League Issue 2 where, you know, everybody's still on the planet being fucking hurt by this alien, uh, unknown alien race. And they're like, okay, we finally got to call him. Call him. Call him. Who the fuck is him? Superman. Oh. Because remember, it's a different Superman. They don't trust him yet. They don't know where he came from. He hasn't had that conversation with them yet. Yeah. You know, um, and then he when Batman, at the end of the issue, finally gets around to calling him. And I'm using you him. Should, I know. I was yeah. gonna say you should say yeah Superman. him. And um, he comes. He goes. Well, my my Superman. I trusted him with my life. And this, that, and the third. Who's speaking? Batman. Okay. He said my Superman. He goes. I trusted him with my life. And da da da. You know. So I'm hoping I could do the same for you. You know. And and Superman's like, don't worry, I got this type of shit. And then like <laughs> he flies off. So, it's still, I'm waiting for him to get around to breaking it down. At least to Bruce Wayne, because, you know, they're best friends. Yeah. And saying, I know Bruce. They're, they're, that they're, would they're shock the friends. shit. They're best friends. Yes. They're, 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 they're friends. frenemies. They're the best frenemies. Okay. That's what they are. So, I'm waiting for him to get around to saying something that would tip I him off. I can't stand DC. You know, like, to tip him off, like, I know Bruce. So, him turning around be like, how the fuck do you know I'm Bruce Wayne if you're not the real Superman? You know what right, I mean? Like, yeah. He's not doing anything. Like, he won't explain shit to them. Like, at all. Oh, like Lois Lane in the fucking Batman vs. Superman movie. Just, you're a journalist, but you don't say yeah, shit. Yeah, but we're not at that part yet. <sighs> so, you know, the only person he'd come close to working with is um, Diana. Princess Diana. Because in the last Superman comic, you know, she was helping him fight off, you know, the, the villain, the, the Kryptonian villain. Yes. Uh, no, Doomsday. She was helping him fight off Doomsday. Okay. And while she was helping him fight off Doomsday, uh, he's like, I got to protect my son. So they all flew off back to his farm. Mm -hmm. And there she saw Lois Lane. And she goes, well, on on my earth, she goes, uh, me and Princess Diana was best friends. I hope we can be the same. Mm -hmm. And I hope seeing me with Clark is not upsetting to you. She goes, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And trust me, we will be just as close as you and your Lois. You know what I mean? Like, that's the closest you get. Of, like, somebody knowing the truth about who he is. Hmm. You know? Why is it that Lois didn't tell her, like, hey, I know you? Well, that's what that's what, that's what what she's saying. She's like, on my planet. She literally said, on my old Earth, me and my Diana 
you know, was best friends. Right. I'm hoping I could be the same with you. And I hope it doesn't offend you seeing me with Clark. Remember, her and Clark was fucking on this, on this version of Earth. Mm. They was dating. So she's like, no, it doesn't offend me. I hope, yeah, and trust me, don't worry about it. We will be just as close. Right. You know, so like, that was just, I was just like, oh shit. So like, it, she must know. Does she know? Does she not know? Like, does it she have the, an inkling? Yeah, like it threw the whole thing in. Cause like, now you're meeting his family. Now you know, she literally told you on my earth. So you know he's the same Superman, the same Lois. You know what I mean? You just know that they're from a different version of, you know, of that right. earth. And technically, it is the same Earth. It was just a different fucking time. time. Yeah, like, remember, yeah. time got fucked up. So, like, it's just, ah, like, I'm all fucked up. <laughs> so, I'm confused. Now, you got this issue of Nightwing, which continues the fact that he rejoined the Parliament of Owls to go undercover. Remember, I told you with the new suit. And this new Raptor guy is training him and fucking him up and basically saying everything Batman taught you was wrong. And at the end of it, he basically tells Nightwing, you know, I'm a good guy. I'm just willing to step into the darkness to get closer to them unlike you okay and nightwing now you could tell because he's ignoring barbara gordon's date that they were supposed to have you know and decides That's okay not good. right so he decides to actually give raptor his full trust because raptor's saying that he's a good guy like him he's just willing to kill and do what's necessary because the whole point was they they rescued a, a so boat he's trying to he's trying to be like like a police like a non-police version of harvey dent no, he's trying to be more Jason Toddish. Mm. Kill or be killed type of thing. Yeah. Like, I'm a superhero, but I kill motherfuckers. But Nightwing doesn't want to kill. But the whole point was, what bothered Nightwing was in the, in the beginning of the issue, uh, there was a, a boat that they rescued, and it had refugees on the boat. Mm-hmm. And the refugees was uh, people, and it was a little girl. And he's like, don't worry, we're going to save you, we're going to get you out of here. And it was by uh, Cobra. You know, it's kind of like Hydra... The DC mm-hmm. version of Hydra. And they stole it from the Parliament of Owls. Not the Court of Owls, the Parliament, which is the international version. Okay. Uh, the Parliament of Owls. And um, the little girl points at his chest, the Nightwing symbol, and goes, superhero, superhero. You know, and... Why did it sound so cute? But that, that's the way it was. And it was like touching his heart because he's like, you know, he knows he's there from a mission from the Court of Owls, Parliament of Owls. So he doesn't know what the ship is for. So he's like, I'm going to get you out of here. Yeah, I'm a superhero. And in the end, they like wind that? up... No, they have to wind up delivering a boat to sex traffickers and shit. What? So he has to give up the whole boat to stay undercover. And I ate at him. You know? I couldn't do some shit like that. And, um... Well, neither could he, which was bothering him so much. So in the end... No, but he actually did it. I wouldn't be able to do that. Because he has to stay undercover, you know? So the whole point is, he... You know, that little girl is the only thing that's in his mind. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's killing him. So, uh, the Raptor, the guy, the, the evil guy that they partnered him with because he's afraid to kill, um, basically tells him, listen, I know that must have hurt you. It kind of hurt me too, but I'm, I'm numb to it by now. Because, you know, it's either, we, you could have saved that boat today, but they would have had 10 more boats coming tomorrow. So we have to give up that one boat in order to save the other 10. Because if we did give up that boat, we would have blown our cover. And if we would have blown our cover... Then we would have never found the other ten boats. This is why I can't be a part so, of no, n- no type of like I can't make decisions like that. But that's what I'm saying. So it, it's turning into like an amazing book. You can see where they're going with with the Raptor Nightwing relationship. You know, right. and that's gonna be real dangerous and fucked up when it comes to an end. I'll tell you that much. So Barbara Gordon basically had a date night with him, and he blew off the date night to go with Raptor to the next mission. So. Because when he jumped mm. in to go to the boat the first time, he's like, yeah, I'll meet you there tonight at the bridge at 12 o'clock in Japan or whatever. And instead of doing that, he went with Raptor to the next mission. Because Raptor was like, I'm not afraid to put one foot in the dark. You're afraid to put one foot in the dark. Because you're hanging on to what Batman taught you. But Batman is not here. And Batman, remember, told Dick, do things your way. Don't ask me for help. So Nightwing is basically now like, if this is what I got to do... To survive in a parliament of owls and get closer to them to shut them down, then and Raptor's telling me he's on the same page as me. I have no choice but to try to trust the guy. Why doesn't, and he, why doesn't he think that he's like fucking manipulating him and just like I don't know? And that's the whole point of what I'm saying. This book is really, really good. Like it's getting to be good. In the beginning, I was like, I'm not really too sure on it. Like, but now I can see the path that the, that the writers are taking it, and it's looking really, really good for me. Hmm. So I'm happy with it. 
I'm, I'm happy with it. And then you have a uh, Suicide Squad, of course, the Rebirth. Uh, right now, the main members is Captain Boomerang, uh, Deadshot. Of course, they're not showing his real face because they're trying to copy the movie. Will Smith is black. Deadshot, really, in the comics, is white. So they're keeping his fucking mask on right now. Mm. You know, of course, because they're trying to capitalize on the sales of the comic book right after the movie. And Harley Quinn, of course. And which is not really lining up because she has her own comic where she's not part of the Suicide right. Squad. So what the fuck? Um, and of course, Rick Flag is in the movie. So, of course, now they got to introduce Rick Flag, you know, again in the comics. So, Amanda Waller goes to Barack Obama. And Barack Obama is saying, we got to shut them down. I'm not joking. He's in this fucking comic. <laughs> and they're saying that we got to shut him down. And then uh, Amanda Waller's like, no, we got to do what we got to do. But I need a guy to lead him. And, of course, that's Rick Flag, And he's in jail, whatever. He's been framed. And because he told his team not to do it because he wanted to protect his team, his team did it anyway behind his back. He got locked up for treason, you know, all this shit, you know, by somebody who really wanted to put him away. Because even Barack Obama doesn't know that he's in Guatuano, uh, Gu- Guantanamo Bay. Oh, okay. Which Barack Obama promised to shut down. So, yeah, we know. Um, that's why it ties back to Barack. So, and Barack's birthday was yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Happy belated birthday, Mr. President. Ooh, are you going to break out your Marilyn Monroe? No. Happy birthday, Mr. No, I think you no? broke out <laughs> your fucking Marilyn Monroe. You know, honestly, babe, I know this is off topic, but the, after that whole conversation we had the other day on the crew chat about you and guys and fruity fucking drinks. I love my fruity drinks. I think you are way too comfortable <laughs> with some shit. Mm. Like, you telling me shit and then you doing shit is two completely what do you different mean? things. What do you mean? What do I do? I- I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I'm completely straight. I- and I'm so straight where I do you not have, have a fear. You have ve- you have very gay tendencies, though. Yes, I can say I don't have gay tendencies, but I am comfortable with my sexuality where I am not. I'm fearless to do things. To do gay things. Well, not actual gay acts, but gay <laughs> things, yes. Yes, I, I can go up to a dude, hit on a dude for the sheer fun of it. I can do it. And That's come out up. and come out still feeling straight because I know I'm straight. That's like a straight girl hitting on a lesbian just to like fuck with her. But I'm not fucking with her. I'm saying I will do it and I'm fearless to do it. That's the whole point I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm going to fucking do it. I'm just saying I'm not afraid to do it. That's my whole point. I don't ever want you and Carnation to be in the same fucking, like... Bar together? Right. <laughs> like, if she tells me to go and grab the dude's ass, I won't grab his ass. I'll smack his ass. I'll give him, like, a nice little sport pat. Like, what up, buddy? <laughs> so let's talk, about, let's, let's talk about Marvel. Let's go to Marvel. Um, let's go to Marvel. Oh, my God. Because Cecily's getting worried about me here. Let's go to Marvel. I'm a little um, concerned. There's no reason to be. So, Kingpin 2 came out. Kingpin still being an evil-ass Kingpin. Um, blah, blah, blah. Right. Deadpool is now getting into the whole Civil War of things where he's locked in a vault with all, the, all of his um, Deadpool mercenaries that was trying to rip him off. And it gets into the story about how Deadpool saved one of the senators from another country or representatives of another country and how he came to be rich, basically. Because remember, he's rich and he funds the Avengers. Um... Then Actually, you get. I did not know that. Then you get into the main issue of this week, which was the Invincible Iron Man, and remember they blew up his building. So remember the humans? They blew up his building yes. from the inside. It was the yes, right. yes, yes. So he because said, the 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 leader she wouldn't, and then her people did it anyway. Yeah, try it. Right. So uh, he's sitting there in the middle of the rubble of his building. And Maria Hill and everybody's there, and they're like, what do you want? You know, why won't you help us? You know, they blew up your building, you know, blah, blah. And he's like, I just want another burger. Can somebody go get me another burger? <laughs> and he's just looking in the sky. And that's when um, Mary Jane comes, you know, Mar- you know, Spider-Man's ex, right. Mary Jane, his new assistant. And she's like, you know, you didn't even talk about Riri Williams. And he goes, Riri Williams? She goes, yeah, you know the girl that reverse engineered your suit? You know, the black chick that we talked about? Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot about her. So he goes and visits her. 
and says, no, nah, you know, it's okay. Show me. Show me what you got. Because the mother was saying, what are you on? Drugs? Blah, blah, blah. Why'd you quit uh, college? Blah, blah. You know, she goes, I can't show you. It's not done yet. Blah, blah, blah to her mom. Yeah. So Tony Stark appears in the doorway, which is breaking and entering, by the way. I just want to put that out there. And <laughs> um, he goes, no, why don't you show her? Because I know what's under there. Mm-hmm. So why don't you show her what you've been working on? I'm curious to see, too. She goes, but it's not done yet. He goes, it's okay. Show me. So she pulls over the tarp. And there lies an Iron Man helmet. Mm-hmm. Kind of customized. You know, it has wings on it or whatever. She goes, I reverse engineered your Mark 41. And this, that, and third. He goes, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually want to, you know, take you and your mother out for lunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, at the end of it, she goes, well, you know, can you tell my mom it's okay to drop out of college? You did. And he goes, shit, I was hoping you didn't know that about me. <laughs> Because obviously he was going to try to convince her to go back to, you know, college. Right. So, um, you can tell that sets up the whole, um... Her taking over type of Her thing. taking over at the end of the Civil War. Right. Is the fact that, you know, he's probably... Because she's like, I need an AI. And he goes, my AI is $41 billion. Do you have $41 billion? He knows she goes, she doesn't have $41 billion. That's the whole point. She goes, she goes, no. He goes, so... Again, it's $41 billion. Such a fucking cocksucker. So he goes, she goes, but you have $41 billion? He goes, he goes, yeah, I'm not giving you $41 billion. <laughs> so she goes, it's okay, I'll make my own. And that's when he gets like the stunned look on his face. Like, the fuck? Because they're, they're bonding because she goes, you know, I, I'm able to fly, but you know, you need the AI for the, yeah, he goes, he goes, yeah, I know what you need the AI for. Because, you know, for like, I guess the tight turn, sharp turns and yeah. things. You know, so... They're bonding over, like, he, like she's demonstrating to him that she knows how his suit works. And if you think about it, he lost... Rhodey, yeah. Right, so he doesn't really have anybody to bond. With that type of shit. But right. Rhodey was never really a genius, though. She's kind of like an improved Rhodey. Rhodey was a patriot that stole the armor. Right. You know what I mean? Or in the comics was given the armor by Iron Man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, But he yeah, knew yeah, how yeah. it worked because he that was his armor. Now. Right. But... He this, couldn't, he couldn't this, talk, like... But, yeah, but this chick is on Iron Man's level. You understand what I'm trying to yeah. say? Like, where she knows how it works. She even knows that she needs an AI to control it better. You know? So, like, you could tell where this is going. Right. Where he's probably going to leave, you know, the Civil War and give the control of his company to her. You think that's how far it's going to go? I think he's going to go off the grid. Yeah, I think he's going to... He's obviously not going to sell the company to her or give it to her, but he's probably going to put it, like... In charge of the company. Hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? Well, until he, until he comes back. You know, because of course you got to bring Tony Stark back. I mean, he's a comic mainstay. But when they're going to bring him back or how they're going to bring him back is going to be the question. I don't think he's going to die. Interesting. I don't think he's going to die. I don't think that's going to happen. And if he does die, you know, the will is probably going to give it to Pepper, you know. Right. His long-term love interest, who's no longer his his assistant, that type of shit. Mm-hmm. He's it's probably going to give it to Pepper. So, um... I don't, <laughs> right or Rhodey, but Rhodey's dead, so it would go the Pepper. So I don't think he's gonna like die. I think he's just he's gonna just be like I'm done with this shit. Take a hiatus. Yeah, he's gonna be like I'm done with the superhero bullshit. Like I'm 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 gone, and he'll just give her control to be the new Iron Man, have all the resources at her disposal. You know what I mean? Like that Iron type of shit. Woman. Yeah, so that's probably gonna be Iron Woman. Unless they're doing what everybody else is doing. You got Laura taking over for Wolverine, calling herself Wolverine. You got Jane taking over for Thor, calling herself Thor. So why not Riri call herself Iron Man? Oh, Riri? That's her name, Riri Williams. Sorry, anytime I hear Riri... You I think Rihanna? About, no, I think about what you call Eve. Oh, Eve? Eve is Riri for different reasons. She's R-E, <laughs> she's R-E-R-E. This girl's R-I-R-I. Um, let's see what else we got she's here. She's going to be mad when she hears me <laughs> say that. Then you got the Uncanny and Humans. Basically, that's all the whole... They're trying to find out who did it, who blew it up. And in the end, you wind up finding out that it was Trident. So the next issue is going to be Medusa going against her own people. Fucked up. Yep. So that's what we got for comics. Uh, from here, we're going to jump into everything with Eve. That segment is actually back, people. <laughs> so you're going to actually hear Yvonne's voice again and hear her talk about the shit that matters to her. Hopefully, it's not makeup. So it's probably ready. To Let's be do this. Let's get geeked up off of everything with Eve. <laughs> or I guess if this is gonna be an Eve segment, it's gonna be let's get glammed. Oh yeah! Don't say that. <laughs> 
everything with Eve. So we're back with everything with Eve. Hi. Eve I'm is finally Eve. back. Oh. <laughs> I just love fucking with Nick. So yeah, that seems to be a theme of today's episode. So, uh, what we got for us, Eve? Well, I was just talking to Nick about this. I was telling him that I'm a boring person. So, really, the only thing that I have to say is that I'm about to have surgery. And I was supposed to have surgery about a week ago. About a week ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, she just broke out the Bobby Schmurder on yeah, this podcast. I yo, it's, Nick, it's Nick's fault. She just said, yo, it's Nick's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand you two. Is she, has, she been get, has she been getting on you today? Yeah, she's been getting on me too. I can tell. Yeah, so... um. Wait, yeah. what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Anyway, so I'm having surgery. Because she has, she has endo me me nitis endo. Now you're just being an asshole. She what is the thing? Endo Nick? gingivitis. Nick. What? Do you want to get fucked up? I've already got hit like 18 times on this podcast. So. Don't don't be an asshole. Say it the correct way. <laughs> Good. Say so, it. Everything with Eve, not everything with Nick. Good. <laughs> Um, I have endometriosis. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before. And for all the men listening, what is that? Oh, Jesus. I don't want to know. Because the men no. don't know what it is. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you want to know what it is, just Google it. It's when your so, fallopian tubes... No, it doesn't have to be necessarily... Go ahead, Nick. You're See? a man. I want to hear this. Okay, it's when a woman's fallopian tubes basically become eroded and corroded. No. And all fucked up. And they no. have to remove the fallopian tubes. No. Like I said, just Google it, guys. <laughs> so, no. Eve, why don't you explain to the men what is the condition? You can't just tell them what they have. They have to know what it is. I'm not explaining this before. To this fucking men because men don't understand. So why don't you help us understand? But then no, we have to get into this whole topic about the woman's like body parts and just I'm tell getting... them the general. Anyway, part. Th- is it everything with Eve? I think <laughs> that's what it's called. Yeah, so give them I think everything. That's what it's called. Not not partial <laughs> information with Eve. So I'm having surgery. I don't know when I'm having <laughs> surgery. You're such a fucking cocksucker, I swear to God. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you you done laughing? You done laughing. Yeah, no, yeah. this is this is why he's been getting fucked up all day. <laughs> oh. Just keep going. Keep going. I'm trying to go, but you're being an asshole. I'm probably going <laughs> to end up going to the emergency room because of you. Because of me? Because of you, yes. But that's, no, seriously, that's how I'm going to do it, you guys. I'm going go to <laughs> <laughs> go to the emergency room so that way I don't have to pay for shit. Yeah, so. Because that's how my insurance works. And so, I have insurance until December. So Eve might become like no condom, no contraceptive proof. So it might be a good thing for for men wanting to fuck, but bad what? thing for her. I don't I don't even Because I you don't less know. chance of her ever getting pregnant. Okay. Awkward silence. There's no awkward silence because you can still get pregnant. You were talking about other men fucking our fiance. No, it wasn't. I was saying just in case other men. I'm saying in general for men, it's a good thing. Aww. Okay, so okay, so three minutes fucking in when we really listen to this podcast and we listen to this part, I'm gonna make you listen to what the fuck you just said. It's okay. I'm saying for men in general, if a woman has endometriosis, that's not what the fuck you said. It is a partially you good said thing. for men that want to fuck her. That is a, that's exactly I did not say that. how you phrase that. <laughs> You may not fuck me, by the way. Did you, did you scream, you may not fuck me <laughs> into the mic? <laughs> did you scream into the mic, you may not fuck me? <laughs> She's putting her disclaimer out there. I Yes. <laughs> so, what the fuck was that, a fake-ass stamp of approval? So, <laughs> the point is... You should put that lip stain on him. Guys, no, you no, don't. This is a brand new one. Guys, no. if you fucking have a chick that says I have endometriosis, it's a sad condition to have, but it's good for your sex life. So no, it's not. You fucking do it is good not. for your sex it makes, life. It's it painful makes... to have sex until they get the corrective surgery. The only, the only, the only, the only so like don't quote, listen. unquote good thing about it is that you most likely can't get pregnant. Right, but most if likely. they get the surgery, if you get the surgery, it's not that painful anymore, right? Yeah, until it comes back again. Right, so you so you got a whole again. good three years to get your fuck on with no pain and no risking pregnancy, fellas. That's 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 what I'm saying here. And then if you do want to have a baby, the only thing you got to do is just get the egg and then either get a surrogate or or 
you know, injected directly into the egg and then things are just I think, good. I think. So, I mean, now, it's still possible with the anyway, signs that we have today. I'm going to cut you off now. Anyway, sure. I'm, I'm going to save, like, an episode to talk about that. Right, because I'm Nick just gonna is, save an episode. Nick this. is just giving a whole bunch of misinformation. I'm giving the men the information that is vital to us. Okay, whatever. No, you, ma'am. Whatever you, say. you are so. Excuse me. I said no, ma'am. Excuse me. And, yeah, but you <laughs> act like <laughs> a <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> what this means? <laughs> no, ma'am. You've been on this all week. What? what? Well, I've not been on anything all week. Yeah. National Organization of Men Against. Amazonian maternity wood mother. Whose fault is it? Who started that shit? Nick. Was Al it? Bundy. You did? I thought it was David. Al Bundy started that shit. No, Nick did. It and then from, David from, and <laughs> Chaos and everybody else wanted to jump on the fucking bandwagon. The Sith Lords are no man. Yeah? Yes. You like sleeping on the floor. Right? And, and we, we tie up. We tie up any man <laughs> That is feminine. Like, leans with women. That's a real man. Not like, you know, homosexuals or anything. Do you, do you but understand? like men that leans with women. And they pretend to be on a woman's side. We tie them up and put a sign on them that says ovulates with an arrow. Go up to oh, them. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's, that's interesting. And you wanted me to do mm-hmm. the rest of the podcast with you? And the Little mm-hmm. Rascals. He Man Woman Haters Club. Mm-hmm. I'm getting like death st- it's for both of them right now. I, we're getting off topic. So anyway. <laughs> and Ivy still has to give me your informative voice for this week. Can I so. draw on you? No, you cannot draw on me. Yeah, you drew so, on her the other day. So, yeah, I did. But she asked me to. She generally asked me to. She did. She said, can, I was using a pen. And then she said, get a marker. What the fuck? That was my idea at first. I was just going with it. I said, fuck it. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you two? <laughs> You shouldn't be talking with your fucking stomach. Yeah, but that, that was cute. And no, that, that was... that was. No, but he still did it on you. Okay, but that was because what? I was trying to be nice to him. Because he got so excited and all. Oh, and I wanted to do the same this. thing with him. And he blah, likes blah, wings blah, and blah, shit. Blah. So he started drawing wings on my back. And I'm like, okay. No. I know how much And then it turned it. into a Powerpuff Girl heart. It was awesome. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah, can, see? I can, I can do that too. So, so, this has been everything with Eve. It's always an interesting portion of the podcast. So, from here, we're going to go into the things you should watch. This is my life. <laughs> this is your life this, for the next 18 years, this, if not more. This is my life. <laughs> things you should watch. Oh, Sith, you need to watch this. So, things you should watch. We watched a lot of shit. Yes, we did. Uh, what do we watch? We watched Batman vs Superman. We watched Man of Steel. Yes. Which I already watched, but Cecily had to watch it. Um, and we watched The Boss. And Suicide Squad came out last night. So I know, but we didn't go see that. Yeah, we didn't see that yet. So let's talk about the initial reactions of the Man of Steel, baby. Since we had to watch everything in chronological order. So what did you think of the Man of Steel? I it was um, uh, <laughs> it was no, okay. that, that's the whole movie. Uh, it was alright. There's no review. So if somebody goes, should I watch that? You go, eh. uh. What do you think of it? <laughs> um, for a Superman movie, it was not so bad. Did you expect less? Did you expect more? What did you... It's fucking DC. You expect, you think I'm going to expect more I mean, DC? it had a lot to live up to. I mean, for nostalgia reasons. Like, Ghostbusters had a lot to live up to. Because you got Christopher Reeves, you know, as a legendary Superman. And then, you know. I mean, it had a lot to live up to. So. Well, I, I didn't... I'll say this much. I did not hate the movie. Did I, you think that it was very well laid out from him being a child to being Superman at the end? You mean the way they kept going back and forth with like flashbacks right, and shit? Right. Rather um, than just a whole hour of an origin story? You know, that was that was okay. I didn't, I didn't like hate that. It's like I didn't mind it. I, I kind of liked it. I mean... I've seen the movie now like four times, but I kind of liked it like how they did that. You know, like the flashbacks rather than just having a strictly origin movie. They did an origin within an origin because, you know, he was still an adult. He was helping out like on the tankers, you know, disguising no, himself. No, I know, right. You know, so that, it showed him as an adult doing adult things. Which I you mean, really don't see. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I like the fact that it started off on Krypton. 
I like that. I that like how part. they drew it out. Like they, it wasn't just a quick flashback. They actually had a right, good like an intro. twenty minutes of a right. Talk. I like that. I don't. It's like you know now that you're really making me think about it. Jesus, making me use my brain. That's what we're supposed to do. Um. While I was watching the movie, the whole back and forth between it went from, because basically it went from Krypton to him being an adult, right. and then it went back. I don't really know how much I like that while I was watching the movie. After I saw the whole thing, it didn't bother me so much. But during the initial watching of it, I was just like, I had questions and I had to pause it and I had to ask you. And you so were you just think, like, and you were just like, babe, it's gonna, they're, they're gonna show it. And so then I had to sit here like. So like, you think rewatching it, it, it would make you like the movie more? No, I don't have to rewatch it. I'm saying, if you did, do you think you would like the movie more? Because now, like you said, then there, you know everything's in order. No. No? no. You still have the same impression of the movie? No, I, it's not that I would have the same impression, but it wouldn't bother me the way it did when I first initially watched it. I'm saying, it. so you think you would enjoy it more? I guess. Because, I mean, I like the fact that they, they did that back and forth. I'm such an asshole. I don't want to give DC, like, any credit for nothing. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was, I, I think that that was a movie that was very well, I guess, uh laid out on paper i guess i mean like how they how they said okay we're gonna do the krypton scene that we're gonna flat uh flash forward you know we're gonna fast, fast yeah we're gonna forward. fast forward i was thinking flashback <laughs> um, we're gonna fast forward to when he's an adult and then you know show how he's coping you know being an adult hiding hiding in plain sight basically All with right. his powers and then we're gonna do a flashback of when he was a kid and what made him hide his powers right you know, and how he adapted, and then we're gonna set up all these all these minor characters, like the kid that he bullied but then saved in the bus. Remember, and then yeah, he was the one that was you know in the fucking IHOP with him. You know, seeing how he grew into Superman. You know what I mean? Like he knows the identity of Superman, so like the entire town is covering for him basically. Yeah. So like, I mean, not really, but yes. In a way, it kind of is. I mean, because you got Lana Lang that's covering for him. You got. You know, the, the redhead kid that's covering for him. You got his mom that's covering for him. You know what I mean? Like, because everybody there was at the bus scene. Right. No, I know. So all the parents, remember the parents was coming by. It was like, I we, we know what your son did, you know? So it's a, it's a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. So, like, the entire town, nobody turned him in, if you think about it. He turned himself in. Mm-hmm. You know? So the kind the town of, of Kansas, you know, Smallville kind of covered for his ass. Town of Kansas. Yeah, town of Kansas, man. It's, 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 they, they, that that town of Kansas, they covered for him. So I liked it. And then um from there, of course, you know, the sequel was Batman vs Superman. Now, ask me whether I like the fucking layout of that movie versus Did you did you like the layout of that movie versus Holy fucking <laughs> shit. Just just holy shit. Did you like it? No. You didn't like the movie? I this this is how the fuck I feel about Batman vs Superman. If anybody's listened to the podcast, you know I talked a hell of a lot of shit about Mr. Ben Affleck and how I was not gonna fucking enjoy the movie because of him and blah 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 blah. I talked a whole bunch of shit. So you know what? I'm not gonna apologize because that was my opinion. But I was wrong. <laughs> apology. That's an unspoken apology. No, because I'm not going to say I'm sorry for my opinion. But your opinion has changed. Yeah. Right. So that's an apology. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, that is. No, it's not. That is a... I'm calling your mother. No, it's not. No, that's an apology. Jesus. No, it's not. Is this how you get your apologies out of your mom? Is this how you're okay with... I forced my apologies out of my mother. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. You enjoyed Ben Affleck? He wasn't half bad. So you enjoyed Batfleck? I never said that I that, that that's what happened. Did you enjoy Batfleck though? No. Did you enjoy Bruce uh, Ben Wayne or did you enjoy Batfleck? Baby. Or did you enjoy both of them? Baby. No, I'm serious. Like, did you like him as Bruce Wayne? Did you like him as Batman? Did you like both? No, I thought his acting was not so bad. The character itself, you're fucking retarded. Like you were so stuck on re- like I don't I don't understand. You talk about you plot. Were, he was so stuck on revenge for the majority of the movie, and then all you gotta say is the fucking name Martha. That's it. <laughs> That's it. How do you know that name? Just just that one name, and then you totally do a fucking three sixty. One eighty. 
fucking 360. 360, bring them back to the beginning. Okay, so then you do a 180, and you're <laughs> just like, we're best friends, and I'm going to protect your mother, and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, he would protect his mother anyway, because that's what Batman does. You know, and it's a woman being threatened. But she's Martha. Martha makes it more of a personal thing for her to wow. actually save a Martha. Martha? A Martha. <laughs> but, I mean, I liked him as Bruce Wayne. I liked him as Batman. I think he played... A, they didn't go into Bruce Wayne as much as they went into Batman. I guess because it's, a, it's a, not a Batman movie. Um, there was more Clark Kent scenes than, than Ben... Uh, Bat, not Batman, not Bruce Wayne scenes. But from what I saw, like when he went to Lex Luthor's little gal or whatever, mm-hmm. he played a, a, a like decent it, Bruce Wayne. Like I mean, because I, I like, didn't get to see him wine and dine and bed people. They did show that he woke up next to a woman, you know, but... They it, did? Yeah, but they, they didn't really dive into him being that suave character because remember bruce wayne is is the the mask yes i know you know so he has to wine and dine and pretend he's into everybody and pretend he's a life of the party you know what i mean like like the millionaire billionaire playboy you know what i mean like that's what he he plays as right so i didn't get to see that there he was on a hunt to steal the information from lex luther you know so i didn't get to see him play bruce wayne really but as a batman type of character i liked no, you didn't. I liked the Batman character. No, you, no, you didn't. I didn't. I didn't like. No, you didn't. The stupidity the, the, of it. No, because the whole time you're just like Batman doesn't do this, and Batman doesn't. No, do No, but that. hear me out. Hear me out. That's what I'm saying. I didn't like the stupidity of the Batman character. I didn't like how he was clueless on certain things. I didn't like the Martha thing. I didn't like the the drive of revenge. I didn't like the killing. I, I those things I didn't like. But him playing Batman as a character, I think he as played an actor. as I'm talking about Batman as a character. I think he did a decent job of playing the Batman character. I think the character of Batman in that movie was flawed. Right. I think if you put him with a different writer, different situation, but keep him as the actor for Batman, I think he plays a very good Batman. I don't know how he plays as a Bruce Wayne yet, which goes back to my whole theory of there should be an actor for Batman and an actor for Bruce Wayne. Yes, I think Since you need... Since when have you had that theory? I've always had that theory. I thought my, Michael Keaton played a very good Bruce Wayne and a very good Batman. I don't think he looked the part of Bruce Wayne. Because, you know, Bruce Wayne is, is bulky. You know, Michael Keaton was very skinny, you know? Yeah. Like, George Clooney played a very shitty Batman, but a very good Bruce Wayne. Well, yeah. You know, uh, because, you know, he has that suave Playboy shit. That's why he's always the most sexiest man alive in all these magazines and shit. So he plays a very good Bruce Wayne, a very shitty Batman. Um, and I guess that's because they gave him the shitty script. You know, like the Batman Visa card, never leave on without it. So, like, you know, I, I, I didn't like that. Uh, Christian Bell played the very shitty Batman and a decent, I'm not going to say good, but a decent Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is just not 5'5". Five five. You know what I mean? Like, Batman's not 5'5". Five five. So... You know, he doesn't have vampire teeth sticking out of his mouth. So, but I thought he played a very good Bruce Wayne at the end to where Ray Jar Ghoul was at the party and he p- pretended to be drunk. It was like, get the fuck out of here, you money mooching motherfuckers, you know, to try to save the people in his house. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and kick him out. So, that was a very Bruce Wayne thing to do. That was the only time in the movie where I could say that he played a good Bruce Wayne. Oh, and the part where he said, oh, I, I'm buying this restaurant so I can do whatever fuck I want. Because, like, his hookers... <laughs> You call them hookers because they were just money, money hungry bitches. You know they're like, oh, your guests are in the the coin fountain pool, and he goes, you know what? I'm gonna buy this restaurant now. So don't let's just ignore that. And they gave him like a million dollar check. You know what I mean? Like that type of shit. So that type of thing. So I, I thought he played a good Bruce Wayne in certain parts. I don't think he looked the part for Bruce Wayne. So go back to Ben Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like I couldn't really see him as Bruce Wayne but you know they didn't give me opportunities to see him as Bruce Wayne but I can see him pulling see it off you see the potential I see the potential yeah I can see him pulling it off but as Batman I think he played a very good Batman I didn't like the killing I didn't like the Bat brand I didn't like uh, th- those things even if you, you're taking your inspiration from Frank Miller Batman vs Superman Dark Knight Returns you know 
he didn't do that in the comics. He didn't right. do that in in, in the in the, the the cartoon animated movie. So that I think was just overboard. Then he said the bat symbol is like a mark of death in prison. Like what? Like they didn't even dive into that. Cause the bad brand don't mean you die in prison. Like, what? Cause that doesn't say that. That basically says you went up against Batman and survived. If anything, that would be a mark of honor in prison. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean you're Batman snitch. You give just say like, it would basically say, yo, I fought Batman and survived. I was the only one out of my group that survived. Yeah, he's, but they made he's a it, killer. You know what I mean? Like, but they made it into Batman brands you. You're like a horrible scum piece of shit. And you don't deserve to be on this earth type of thing. Like, once you get to prison, like, motherfuckers kill you. Yeah, but they're, 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 they're just as bad as you. I don't You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm what, what people in prison as the cops? You saying that the cops kill you, basically? Like, I don't fucking know. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I, they didn't really go into the whole story about what the bat brand even fucking means. You know what I mean? Like, come on, but he was going to brand um, uh, Lex Luthor at the end, and he didn't. Yeah. He punched the wall instead. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So, like, what the fuck does a bat brand mean? Was it a, a ploy by Lex Luthor to get Batman framed for killing people in prison? Like, anybody with a bat brand, I want you to kill him. You know what I mean? Like, that type no. of shit. Like, like, so they didn't go into what the bat brand really means. Is Batman really paying people in prison to kill people with the bat brand? No, I don't think that's what Right, exactly. I don't think so either. So, like, what what's the point? Why is people killing people with the bat brand? Because they think you, you got the bat brand only because you snitched? Where everybody else died. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, there, there's no backstory to the to the Bat Brand in prison, so they didn't really do a good job there. Batman killing people, throwing cars into people and shit. Like, no. Uh, Batman trying to kill Superman. No, because even in the comic books, he didn't kill Superman. He just told Superman stay the fuck out of Gotham. You know, like so. It no, I I don't agree with with the the, the portrayal for Batman, but. I did love the portrayal of Wonder Woman. I thought that was an amazing arc. I think they fleshed that out very well for the limited, limited time that she had on the screen. Yeah, because she she had like a cameo fucking appearance. That was pretty much it. It was a very long cameo if you think about it. Even when she wasn't I'm, on screen. Remember he was doing the foul investigations and he saw the picture of her with the, with I mean, the, the soldiers back in 1918. I don't really know. If you, if you look at the trailer, pretty much almost every scene in the trailer... Is the same amount of screen time, right? That pretty she much that she gets. But she was she was at the gala. She stole Bruce Wayne's shit. Then he saw her looking at the the sword that she wanted to steal. But she they both knew it was a fake. Remember? Mm-hmm. And she goes, "I put your your shit back. I didn't steal. I borrowed it. Mm-hmm. Put it back in glove compartment because I couldn't decrypt it." So then he finds her fucking email somehow on Google, and then like sends her the email with all of her pictures. You get what I say? So. And then she shows up when she's on the plane. So I think that her cameo was very well fleshed out. It showed the character that, okay, we don't know who she is. Well, we all knew who she is, but I'm saying like for an average moviegoer. We don't know who she is. Oh, shit. She's time displaced, so she must be a superhero. Oh, shit. She got off the plane because she has a change of heart. Oh, shit. She's kind of in love with Bruce Wayne because he's suave. Yeah, because they had that, that sexual chemistry going. And then, you know... Oh shit, she's stronger than, you know, Batman is. And stronger, just as strong as Superman because she was like chopping Doomsday's legs. And that shit. was that was really cool. So, I, like, I like that whole that whole Doomsday scene. Yeah, that and then thing. Doomsday was, was horribly done. I didn't like Doomsday. I didn't like the whole General Zod becoming Doomsday. I don't like how they gave that him his bones stupid. until the end. You know, I, 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 and then they killed Superman. Spoiler alert, go fuck yourself. I, I think... They killed Superman. But in the end, of course, you know Superman comes back because there's going to be a Justice League movie. I'm telling you right now, at the end of the movie, Superman's going to come back at the end of the Justice League movie after Batman puts it together because the Flash said you need to bring us together. So, you know, all the cameos of the Flash. I think the Flash looked pretty good as an actor. I think he looked good in the mask. He looked like he played the, the Flash part well. You know, I don't like his retardedness. Am I early? Am I too early? I'm too early. <laughs> you need to bring us together. Because Batman didn't even answer. Like, he goes, am I too early? Cricket, cricket. Am I too early? Cricket, cricket. I'm too early. Okay. <laughs> bring us together. Like, I, uh, That's funny. But the actor in, in the mask, I like. I liked him. He looked like a Barry Allen type. But you got to make him blonde. Barry Allen is blonde. So you got to, like, I'm very big on accuracy. 
Uh, Aquaman, I didn't like the glowing eyes in the cave. Aquaman doesn't have glowing eyes. I don't know. And then he came out with the trident, remember, and blew everybody away. Like, yeah. I didn't like that. Like, how do you get video from underwater? Like, I don't... I got the video, remember when the Flash was there with the grocery store? Of course, grocery stores has video cameras. But you got videos underwater? Like, how do you even retrieve that if everybody died? You know what I mean? Like... Because you weren't paying attention to the scene, obviously. What they what they did was, if you really paid attention, they it looked like there were more than one... Person. Not person, submerged machine. I didn't see a machine, I saw people. Oh, it was machine, babe. No, whatever. Point is, he that's, must have destroyed all of them. So, either Aquaman recording. can't count or he let one go. Obviously, he let one go. That was For what reason? Because Atlantis is always supposed to stay hidden. But that was the whole thing, is that it went to look in, and then he saw it, and shot that one out, and there was that one in the background that captured the whole thing. I don't know. Unless it was a Wi-Fi feed, and it was transmitting the whole time, because if he destroyed it, then that's fucking first part of him coming out of the cave would never even fucking been to, like, seen. Maybe, but, that's, maybe that's what happened. I don't know. Point is, yeah, shitty. Uh, what was the other one? Cyborg... They showed the mother box, and then Batman had that flashback of Dark Side coming with the Parademons. So all of that links. So you know, Justice League's going to be about Dark Side and Apocalypse. You know, and Batman because has Cyborg to... has a mother box in him now. So, but uh, did they mention Lois Lane in that? Yeah, he said Lois Lane is a key. Barry you know, is the one that said that, right? Yeah, he goes. Lois Lane is a key. He's a key. She's a key. Whatever. I didn't like the helmet because Barry Allen doesn't need a helmet to run in time. He just uses a cosmic treadmill. Where he just runs really fast, where he breaks time. You like I explained to you, yeah, rebirth yeah. and shit. So he doesn't need a helmet, so that shit is fucking stupid. But I don't know, whatever. Point is, you know, unless you're gonna make Injustice, is gonna be the, the next fucking Justice League movie. Not for nothing, that's what made me want to watch Batman vs Superman in the first place. Injustice. The trailer yeah. for it, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it looks like it's gonna be a good movie. So from here we're gonna jump into Suicide Squad. We're gonna watch Suicide Squad hopefully sometime this week. I feel like I'm getting a little Baby. under the weather, so hopefully afterwards. Baby, um, you don't understand. You're gonna you're gonna take some time. I know. I gotta find a way to get Suicide Squad in the house. I got it. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, um, the boss. Did you like the boss with uh, most? Yeah, it was. I expected it. Uh, like parts of it to be funnier, but it was a, it was a funny movie. It was funny. Yeah, I don't think it got. The credit it deserved. It got shitty ratings, but watching the movie, I was entertained. It I wasn't half bad. I, I didn't want to stop watching it. The the point about the guy sucking dick was funny, cause he goes he goes okay now I'll suck dick and she's like no wrong time you're supposed <laughs> wrong, to suck the guard's dick wrong person you're not, you're not supposed to suck his dick you're supposed to suck the guard's and dick and he was like I'm trying to be a team player he's like I'm a team player I gotta suck your dick I gotta suck the dick and then the dude from Game of Thrones was like. I don't want you to suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dinklage. I yeah. love him. I love He's him. Like, I don't want you to suck my dick. And you talk so much shit about Peter Dinklage. I No, I talk shit about Peter Dinklage in Destiny. He was horrible as a ghost in Destiny. Horrible. That's why they switched him out. And they changed the actor, the voice actor. They changed all the scenes. They took him out for the game. Mm. Mm-hmm. But looking at, at the work that he's done, I mean, he could have been a good ghost if he fucking did it better. I guess that's the director's fault, somebody's fault, but he'd have been a very good one. Um, so, we're going to get geeked up now and jump into the disturbing force. And um, Oh, no. Yeah, it's gonna it's a little little sad. Uh, so, we're done getting geeked up with the, the things you should watch or should have watched. Um, at we least by now. We didn't talk about my Joker theory. Oh, you want to talk about your Joker theory? Okay, so let's get geeked up on your Joker theory. Go ahead, quickly. I forgot about it. The three Jokers, three different universes, movies, all connected. Well, three comics. It's really the the three. The, the, what was it? It was it was the Golden Age, the Silver Age, Mo- Bronze the Bronze, age, and the Modern, modern right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So there's just basically theory going around that if anybody fucking pays attention to fucking comics, you know that what what was the chair? The Mobius chair. The Mobius chair. Yeah. Right. So told Batman that there's three Jokers. Right. And so people have been trying to fucking figure out who the fuck are these three Jokers. So they were saying that basically based on the timeline that you have, because during the Golden Age, the Joker was basically like this... I think it was Cesar Romero. Right. He was like this prankster 
type of care no 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 that was in the silver age no that was no because because in the first because in the first one he was a he was a thief and mm. shit like that in the in the golden age and then remember that's I when guess. that's when they had the comic book review thing come out because right, they yeah. started getting mm-hmm. publicity about oh comic books is what's making teenagers be delinquents and kind of like blah, games blah. now right his repeating itself right so then they made him a prankster in the silver age and then in the bronze they made him a fucking psychopath and in the modern age they kind of continued that right and went darker right so that's that's where the whole theory of the three jokers, jokers in. comes into so they're saying that's each joker from each age is a different joker right and they're saying that the movies support it because the movies was the same way. You go from Cesar Romero to my, uh, not Mike Keegan, Jack, Jack Nicholson, and then you go to Heath Ledger. And, and Jared now Leto. Jared Leto, yeah. Right, so Jared Leto's continuing at least one of them. So which one could it be? Um, so, I mean, it, it's a sound theory. But we're going to get geeked up on Disturbing the Forest, which is usually the serious portion of our podcast. And... From there, we're going to get happy again with video games. So Yeah, because you sound so miserable just disturbing the force. about disturbing the force. force. Well, because everybody knows it by now. If they don't, you know, disturbing the force is a part of our podcast where we just use our platform to discuss the things in life that matters. And we take a break from video games, comics, and things like that, and movies, and TV shows. And we talk about the world around us and try not to be oblivious to the things around us. So, you know. That's what the disturbing forces. So, let's tone down the geekness for a little bit and let's get serious. Ready? Let's be adults, babe. Adults free comics. Oh my god. Let's get serious. There's a disturbance in the force. So, disturbing force. This is like I said before. This is the segment where we decide to take a break from comics, games, movies, and things like that, and we talk about things that affect the real world using our platform as podcasters to be able to inform the public of things that we think that you should know. So, you always give me that look, but it, it's it's a different segment from going from pop culture and geek and nerd culture. No, I know, baby. So I I, I break it up by explaining to the new people that never heard us before why we're baby, no longer talking about Spider Man. Baby, I gave you a look because you put anti itch cream all over your nose. I did because my nose was itching this entire <laughs> know, podcast, so which I, is a sign of me getting so sick. So I just really looked at you and was like, okay. So. What we're going to talk about today is something that every American American citizen should know, and even citizens that are not legally American citizens should know, because this deals with something not state, not town wise, or or you know city wide or whatever. It's federal. It's the entire fucking nation. The FBI just released 18 hours of spy plane, keyword spy plane video from the Freddie Gray pr- protest, and if you didn't know, uh, the protest was it followed the, the death of Freddie Gray in 2015 and the release came in response to a freedom of information act which you know people fucking pushed to get Mm -hmm. they didn't want to give it fucking voluntarily of course by the aclu and it gives a sense of how much visual surveillance the fbi uses during high profile protests now the question i'm saying is it can be used for other shit so we'll get into that after you know i fill you guys in so the videos are all shot from traditional pilot aircraft that's number one okay So, traditionally, these aircraft are piloted, like uh, planes or helicopters, but they're not. Nobody's in them, okay? It's drones, completely drones. So, they're being remotely operated from a different site, so it can't be tracked. So, you can't see people's faces and shit. So, that's number one. So, that's technology that people don't think that the FBI has, but they can. They can actually fly a fucking helicopter with no pilot. So... Why is there so many helicopter crashes or plane crashes? I don't fucking know if you could just take control from where you are. I, I, I don't know. So, um, according to the ACLU, uh, it also points out that drones can be seen in many of the videos. Now, I want to remind you, there's 18 hours of this shit on the FBI website. And yes, in the clips that I'm watching here, there's drones flying around. Yeah. Okay? And... <laughs> It's unclear if these drones are piloted by police, protesters, curious onlookers, or all of the above. My money is going to be on the FBI. And it's not paranoia. It's just that if you're flying a helicopter, you can't really maneuver so much. 
But a drone definitely can. It can do 360s. It can do loop the loops. It can do all this shit. And it can. I'm just saying you can do multiple shit. It's like one of those old school RC car shit that they, you know, when they started doing planes and shit. That you can do things with, with drones that normal people can't. You can even deliver packages like Amazon or shoot people with guns. So I mean, drones could do many things at this point. Um, now the videos, which all day from April 29th to May 3rd. Which means this wasn't a one day thing. They weren't just like, hey, we're curious. We're not there. Let's just go see what's going on. No, this was this was multiple days, people. And uh, if you look at it, it it's, it's kind of weird that they covered that many days and they only have 18 hours worth of footage. Right, exactly. So it also switched from infrared tr to, to traditional camera mode. And then zoom in. So when they're zooming in, yeah, it doesn't appear that you can see any faces clearly. But why are you even zooming in? You get what I'm trying to say? Like, what are you looking for? A bomb? You know, guns? Like, no I, can, I can get that, but you're not even looking for faces. So, if you're zooming in to look to see if you got a gun, wouldn't you want to see somebody's face? You know, who's, pulled, who's pulling the gun? You know, whatever. Like, no. And you're using infrared. Infrared is usually, like, for body scanning, things like that. See if you get, like, a cold spot mm -hmm. or a warm spot, which could indicate weapons, discharge weapons, bombs, things like that of that nature. Nukes, anything like that. So... Obviously, you know, they thought something big was going to happen from regular fucking people protesting. So, I don't know if that's fear of the own American people or if they thought the terrorists was going to give a shit enough about, you know, a, a dude like Freddie Gray being protested against. I would think that they would want to blow up, like, the next World Trade Center or the Empire State Building rather than the fucking protest. Okay, so I think that's kind of like overkill. Now, um... Even at maximum zoom, like I said, it doesn't appear any faces are clear. But you can watch the 18 hours if you got time to kill on the FBI website. Uh, after the protest occurred, it was revealed in October of 2015 that the FBI planes that was using the night vision. And here's the key thing. They were registered under fake businesses. Yeah, it wasn't even like... I get the secrecy because it's FBI. But baby, fake businesses? Really? What does that sound like? That sounds like some deep cover bullshit that you don't want the public to find out about. Yeah. Okay, so the point is, yeah, I get it's the FBI. You got to be secretive. You got to be like, oh, super spy. But you're not the CIA, okay? Like, you're the FBI. You have headquarters that people go walk in at any given point in time. I mean, Blacklist proved that when Red walked in and fucking dropped wow, his bag really, on the floor. Really just yeah, you know what I mean? And then said, hey, I want to speak to this guy. I'm on the most wanted list. Arrest me. You know what I mean? So, like, come on now. Really? Really, like you registered it under fake businesses, that means we can't trust you for shit at this point. Not even the FBI. If we see FBI planes, we go, Oh, it's FBI planes. Yeah, I get sometimes you need secrecy, but not at a fucking protest, man. Like, it's not that's to me, it's overkill. And, uh, you know, they have been operating around a protest location, so it wasn't just one block, one tree, one time, multiple places. All right, and then it. it Oh, man. It's just, it's just and what doesn't make sense to me is, is that me. it was just like the whole reason the protest happened was because how old was he? 25 or something of that nature? And he died in police custody. Well, this, this because is what we're. This because what I'm about, of, yeah, I'm about to get into that part. So it's not clear what the FBI's re records retention policy for videos like these might be and how could they be used with future investigations. So the point is, nobody knows why, how, or if, or how they're going to use stuff like this in the future. That's the scary part, that they didn't even come out. I mean, you put it on your, your website, but you don't even say, hey, we're going to use this in the future for things like this, this, and this, and maybe we were testing it out. You know what I mean? Like No, they said they just, were testing it out in the fucking 70s, and this is the result of it. Right, but you're not saying why you're using it now, is my point. Right. They're not saying, hey, we were testing it out, you know, be, you know, for the protest, because use, in the future, we're going to use this to look for terrorists. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's no reason for it. So you just post it on your website, and it's like, yeah, we have no trade posts there, we're just not going to explain ourselves. You know, like, it's fucked up. So, as Cecily was saying, uh, he died, Freddie Gray died in April 2015, after being in police custody, while transported in a van. How did he die from transporting in a van? That's what I want to know. As an ex-cop, I want to know. And he's in the back of a van. He's handcuffed, and he's just sitting in the back seat. How did how he does, die? How, how does he acquire a spinal injury that leads to his death? Because there was a spinal injury. Yeah. And so, to me, it sounds like he got fucked up in a van. Just putting it out there. 
Um, one of the guys was one of, of course the they talk shit. Of course they talk shit. Prisons always talk shit. I think somebody got their feelings hurt and fucked this dude up to the point where he broke his spine. Well, one of the officers got committed of um, yeah murder. No, 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 no. One, none of them were convicted. One got no, charged, charged with murder, sorry. but he never went to jail. He didn't get convicted for the shit. None of them got convicted. Sorry. Exactly. So he got arrested for allegedly having an illegal switchblade. So just a switchblade knife, right? The motherfucker died over a switchblade knife. That's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, I understand it's illegal. Yeah, I understand police officers had all the right in the world to arrest this dude. But no, no. To die over a switchblade. To, die, to die over it. And especially after you've already been arrested, probably handcuffed, and being transported back to the precinct. No. Crazy. Um... And then they, the article goes on to say it should be probably be noted for historical context that when the FBI acquired its first ever surveillance planes in the 70s, it was actually quite a minor scandal. Um, their first planes are actually army surplus from the Vietnam War. And the FBI has provided absolutely no justification for establishing its own air force. Why does the FBI have its own air force? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a Democrat from Wisconsin said when it became public that the FBI was buying up Army's old spy planes. So not only, okay, does it have one or two, it was buying all of the Army's old spy planes. And this is the result of it. The Bureau ought to get out of the air power business as soon as possible, said the Democrat. But the FBI quickly calmed everybody's concerns. It's strictly an experimental thing, said FBI Special Agent in charge of the Los Angeles Field Office in 1975. But we think the plane could be very effective in trailing cars involving an extortion of kidnapping plots, for example, or rescuing kidnapping victims. So we know how that turned out. Mm-hmm. It was experimental, yet you're using it now in 2015. And you're using it against the own American people that's doing nothing but protesting. Which is within our fucking right. I'm horrified at this story, and I am scared for the future of this company because this is last year, people. This is so that means we ain't even talking about this year shit, all right? And all the fucking police protests, and all the police and brutality all, and all the things, shit, yep. and all the police murders. What the fuck is flying around our heads now? So I now I think at every protest you need people on the rooftops with binoculars going spy plane at the left. And somebody just needs to pull out a gun and shoot the spy plane because there's yeah. nobody there's nobody in the spy plane. Yeah, but, but they need to shoot happen. the spy plane because no, this is my point. They need to shoot the spy plane because then the FBI will get the message. We know we that you're on to us. You know what I mean? Like we're just protesting peacefully. No, because then they could charge you with some shit. They could charge you with some shit, but at least you know what it what goes around comes around. You want to spy on us illegally, all right, and pull up some bullshit lies. Then when we shoot down the fucking spy planes that you're illegally having. Okay, then what? You can just say it's basically you doing illegal shit. I'm doing illegal shit. We go to jail together. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying that's basically what it like. That's what this this country I believe needs. It needs another revolution. I don't mean a revolutionary war. I mean people versus the government. And I don't mean black people versus the government, white people versus the government. I mean the entire fucking population versus the government. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like yeah. Back in the days, Americans was willing to fight for what the fuck we believed in. Now, shit like this happens, and then we go back to watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I'm telling you. Like, this shit is fucked up, man. Like, wake up. Everybody needs to wake the fuck up, stand the fuck together, and make some shit happen. Change is not going to happen unless you make the change happen. Like, the world will not move unless you push it. A rock won't move unless you push it. A drink of water won't happen unless you pick up the glass. This country is not going to change unless we make it change. All I'm going to say... And the only way we can make it change is if we do it together, because one voice is not enough. Even Martin Luther King proved that. One, his voice alone was not enough. He needed everybody together. And when he said everybody, that included white people, white pastors. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's what he needed. He needed everybody together. Not just black people. He needed white people, too. So, it, this shit is just... It's, it's fucking nauseating. What's horrible, though, is the fact that, like, ever since 9-11, I feel like we've been terrified. And we've been getting about rights because of that. Yep. That's the sad part. Yep. It, it's just... Uh, so, what do you guys think of of the FBI spy planes and spying on us? Uh, we, we know we love hearing from you guys about Spider-Man and... X-Men and all this shit, but I really want to know what you guys think about this. 
Leave, leave the comments. You can text us, leave a voicemail, whatever you want to do. We'll read it on air. You know, we'll read your comments, read your feedback. We love doing that shit. Leave it below and let us know what you guys think. Uh, so from here, we're going to jump into video games, something a little bit brighter, happier. So let's get geeked up with some video games and try to take our mind off of the spy plane that might be out my window right now because I'm saying this shit. <laughs> I love you. So, bro. yeah. Sith, don't play yourself. So video games. This is gonna be quick. Uh let's get geeked up with some fucking video games up in this bitch. Oh. Alright, so Okay. Batman came out. Telltale game series. Uh Cecily doesn't even know this shit yet, so I'm gonna fill you in. Cecily, baby. Yes. Telltale yes. game series, like the Walking Dead and shit where you go click, point, every decision have a different outcome. That's what you They made see. they made a new Batman game. Episode one came out. I haven't had a chance to play it. I'm going to play it as soon as my child's born. So I get a get a review for you next week. Uh Marvel Ultimate Alliance came out. People who hate it for the PC uh, for the Xbox One and the PS4, well, at least the Xbox One, I didn't play the PS4 version yet. It looks pretty good. Um, people are pissed because the DLC characters for the first game, uh, was not included, but Activision is looking into it. They, they hear the, the, the people's concerns because people are bitching about it because all the DLC characters are in the second one, the Civil War one, but, uh, not the first one. So they're saying that they will down the line, probably like two years from now, no, in Activision, uh, include the DLC characters from the first game into, uh, the first game. So that will be coming along down the pipeline. That's why I'm not rushing to complete it because I want the Hulk because that was my that was my nigga back then. So I, I kind of want him back in the game. So hopefully we get him uh, in the first Ultimate Alliance game sometime soon uh, in the near future before summer's out at least hopefully. Um, what else did I play? Uh, Overwatch came out with uh, their summer series where basically you could play uh, soccer. It's kind of like Rocket League, uh, you know, with rocket cars and soccer. Uh, with Lucio, so the three on three Lucio, and um, I'm pretty beast at it. I kind of like it. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I suck at Lucio, but apparently I can knock a ball into a fucking goal. So I I, I'm you. pretty beast at that. I tried that last night. You also get a couple skins. People are pissed at the skins because, as you know, they're drops. So each drop is randomized. So if you want the skin of Tracer with the British flag on her back, or you want the skin of the Netherlands crotch piece. For Torbjorn, or if you want uh, uh, Lucio soccer outfit, or you want the Russian Zarya weightlifting and her Olympic outfit, things like that. These skins are only for a limited amount of time. I think you have one week left for them, and the only way to get them is from loot boxes. So you have one or two things to do. You can either buy a shitload of loot boxes and hope you get what you want, or you can just keep grinding and leveling up, which would take you hours, and you might only get five. And some of them you don't even get skins because you might just get sprays because they also got limited time sprays and, and voice lines and things like that. So I want skins, but the only way it looks like I can get skins is if I buy a shitload of loot boxes, like 45 of them, and just keep opening and opening and opening until I get skins that I want. Which is crazy. Which is insane, and that's what people are complaining about. Yeah. But, I mean, I like the fact of limited edition skins that you can only get for a certain amount of time. Because, I like the idea. Because it, like makes, how... it makes you cool. You can just say, like, in the game, people... cool. Right, because after the summer's up, people going to be like, oh, shit, you got that skin. I wish I had that skin. You can just say, it yeah. shows how much dedication you have. But at the same time, it kind of sucks. how much money you had to waste. Right, but it kind of sucks. But at the same time, it's just like, yeah, but it's... I'll never be able to get that skin ever again. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think they should say, okay, you may not be able to get it the way you want to get it now, but down the line, maybe two years from now, we're going to have... A bundle pack for fifty bucks, where you can get all the skins you've missed out on. You know what I mean? For you really that, I think they would do that. I, I'm saying I think they should. Oh. Is my point? You get what I'm trying to say? Like that way, people have the opportunity. To say okay, maybe I can't get it now because the the you know the, the the event is over, but at least I'll be able to get it two years from now. You know what I mean? Like, and plus that gives your game replayability because then people will go back to that game. You know, to get the skins that they didn't get. You know, because you have dedication that way. So. At least then, and it's a long-term business model, and it gives Activision more money in their pocket. So, I mean, that that's it's a win-win for everybody. Make the skins limited limited now, but a chance later on to get it. You hmm. know? You get what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. give people the, the, I'm popular, I'm special, you're not, for the two years. You get what I'm trying to say? And then give everybody a chance to get it later on if they pay a certain fee. Hmm. I think that's the best way to go about it. Activision, you take my idea, I want my royalties. So, you know... 
as for that, I mean, you always fucking uh, think you're gonna get royalties to shit. I, I hope I'm gonna get my royalties for this. We need we need funding for the Osef show and Osef brand. So I mean, uh, besides that, I'm trying to think of what else uh, came out. Um, you got that We Happy Few, uh, which I'm not really into that game, but that game did come out. It's come out to pretty good reviews. Um, and other games are getting updates, but there's nothing really big coming out. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. You got the summer drought, so wow, I got the hiccups. Uh, you got the summer drought, so when you get the summer drought, you know you don't really get new games coming out. Right. Uh, so right now, if you didn't play Batman, I'm hearing really good reviews about it. Go out, try out the Batman uh, Telltale game series because you actually get to see the Bruce Wayne side of Batman more than Batman because Batman is more action. So this game takes a lot more Bruce Wayne and shows you a deep inside look at Bruce Wayne's life. And the decisions you make as in every Telltale Games impacts the ending and impacts other people's reactions. Right. So you can choose who lives, who dies, you know, with Bruce Wayne's decisions. If he decides to build this, what happens to Gotham? Does Gotham become a better place? You know, a worse place? You know, does Batman have to do more work, less work? You give just say, like, yeah. so it's a really, really good, compelling look at the duality of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Hmm. So. That's interesting. I want to try the game out just to see. And. I will. I'll have a review for you at some point in time. Uh, on a side note, I also want to say it's not video games, but Pops. The Power Ranger Limited Edition Pops came out. I'm really happy about that. I want my Red and White Ranger and my Pink Ranger. I'm going to try my best to fucking get them. But at this point, I have my Metallic Blue, my Blue, my Yellow, my Green, and my Black. So I'm just missing my other fucking three, which I'm upset about. But... That came out as well. So go check those out. Run to your nearest GameStop, Barnes Nobles, whatever, if you want to go topic. get them. Hot Topic, all that cool shit. And uh, lack of time is disturbing me, baby. So it's kind of winding down. And as we wind down, that means getting closer to baby time. So, you know. You sound so enthusiastic. I'm nervous. So really? this lack of time is disturbing me. So what? let's let's what? get geeked up off the lack of time. Oh, Seth, this lack of time disturbs me. So, lack of time. Uh, so, you're so, so you're nervous, huh? Yes, it's me being a dad. So, as Are you going to be nervous to hold him? Yeah, I'm always nervous to hold newborns. I don't like the neck thing. You, you don't know, like the neck thing? You know how you can snap the necks and stuff like that? So, if they can't keep their head up, that bothers me. He's not gonna be able to keep his head up for like a couple of weeks. That's what I'm saying. So that, that that's gonna make me nervous. Yeah. But when the head gets up and it starts bobbling around, that's gonna, <laughs> make, that's gonna make me laugh as he tries to hold his head up every fucking time. I'm gonna call him a little bobblehead. Um. So yeah, our son's name is Andros Anakin, and we want to leave you with that, and knowing that as you listen to this podcast, uh, we're gonna be going through the whole pregnancy and pushing and all this stuff, and the video is gonna be up. On the YouTube for Osef of Cecily's no pregnancy and her birth. Video of my vagina. Anywhere. The, the vagina video is going to be up. So no. if you want an inside look, <laughs> literally inside, go to the YouTube for Osef Nick. and check that out. Nick. So that's going to be fun. That's um, not happening. That's going to be happening. It's going to be amazing. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it with you? So like, is, you is talk there... shit about how many people I let in my vagina, but you want. <laughs> like the world to have access to seeing my vagina. I don't understand. So, what do you want to leave our listeners off with this week, honey? I'm going to be a mom the next time they, we record the podcast. It's a really big thing. It is. It is a big thing. And I'm going to be a father. So, mm-hmm. we're going to be yeah. parents. Holy shit. And Eve, <laughs> and Eve is going to be a mother, too. That's going to be fun. That, that's going to be a lot of funny videos for Eve. Um, she'll be like, How do I do this? And I'm going to have that whole shit on camera. Um, I can't believe she fucking said I wanted to practice with a diaper and she put it on the cap. Yeah, she she I practiced still, putting still, a diaper on the cap. I still can't get over that. I still can't get over that shit. So, any advice for us being parents? As you know, comment section below. We want to hear from you guys, man. Let's hear from you guys. So, as a lack of time ticks down, ticks down, tick tock, tick tock. Uh... I want to say thank you for everybody that stuck with us and continue to stick with us. Uh, we apologize for all the crying in the future that you're going to hear in the background. Um, I want to say a big shout out to the OSIF Showgirls. You can check them out on Instagram at OSIFshowgirls.com. Love you, can, you guys. You can check out all the OSIF Lords at OSIF Lords on Instagram. We have amazing cosplayers, gamers, streamers, twitchers, musicians, everything. 
Just really um, amazing people. To yeah, and we're trying to get our musician uh, interview back. And we're going to be trying to work on that because we haven't heard from her for, for a couple of days. So we're going to try to get her back on to the show. Uh, that's going to be amazing for the live concert. And uh, we still got amazing things ahead of us. This is a one step at a time thing. Um, and we're pushing every fucking day for this. Uh, you can follow us on Twitch for, at uh, twitch.tv slash Twitch. And YouTube, we need 100 subscribers, people. So subscribe to our YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in O space Sif. You'll see us <laughs> pop up with our logo. And once you see us pop up with our logo, go there and subscribe. And you can see tons of hilarious videos from us back scenes and backstage and stuff like that. And, and see the things that we do. And it's, it's hilarious. On top of that, you can also see some of our amazing beauty gurus like the Fox Chanel. And some of our amazing streamers and stuff like that. And gamers is making YouTube videos. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, what is it? Osif Show on Twitter and our Facebook, which is ran by an amazing Just Yellow. You know, you can tell Just High, and that's the Osif Show Girls on Facebook. So I'm giving out all the links to you guys here because. So remember, it's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's Facebook. Yeah, so we're we're just there's basically YouTube. we're putting it out there for you guys because, like I said, by the time we come back, we're gonna be parents. So. We want to make sure we leave you guys with all the information because I do not know at this moment when is the next time I'm going to be able to sit down in this chair and talk to you guys without a headache. So, really I want without to, a headache? He's going to be crying. So, it's an amazing summer. We still got four more weeks left that we intend to enjoy and spend with you guys and give you guys amazing content as well. Uh, stay tuned for the sex episode that we got dropping this week. We're going to be recording it today right after this so we're not leaving this studio so it will be recorded today and it'll be uploaded at some time on an automatic upload for you guys, either Monday or Tuesday, depending on what we think is good uh, when a baby comes out. So if we could release it sooner, great. If we could release it, you know, in a couple of days, still great. As long as it's not like next Friday, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're good. So that all depends on the slip and slide in, in Cecily's vagina. So oh my God. Uh, until next time, baby. May the fucking force be with you. May the fucking force be with you. You could watch Eve on YouTube. Fuck that up. So until <laughs> next time. My daddies and my dadettes. My freaks and geeks. Stay geeked up. Deuces. This has been the O Sith Show podcast. Not enough for you? Make sure you subscribe. New episodes every weekend. And bonus surprise episodes throughout the week. Check us out on all of our social media. Like Instagram, O Sith Show. Facebook, O Sith Show. Twitch, Dark Death Wing. You can also write to us at Force from the Fans at OSith.com. Like swag? Well, the O Sith Show has plenty of it. You can find our official store at Store Envy. Just search for O Sith or check out the links in the description. Here at the O'Sith Show, we love our nerd and geek pop culture so much that we have ambassadors and an entire family for it. Go meet some of our cosplayers, gamers, and more at osithshowgirls.com or at osithlords.com. You can also find these amazing people on Instagram at osithshowgirls and the Dark Lords themselves at osithlords for exclusive interviews, merchandise, pictures, and more. Don't forget the show's official website at osith.com. Conquering the galaxy, one social media platform at a time.